dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. A drop of dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. A drop of dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. Cause it's the end game time. Oh, we'll roll the old dice and sing a song. We'll roll the old dice and sing a song. We'll roll the old dice and sing a song. Cause it's the end game time. Oh, a bottle of rum won't do us any harm. A bottle of rum won't do us any harm. A bottle of rum won't do us any harm. Cause it's the end game time. in the sea and dead men in the sand old salt marsh sleeps while its enemies plan best batten down your hatches there's a storm near at hand oh, we should have stayed on land oh we'll roll the old dice and sing a song we'll roll the old dice and sing a song we'll roll the old dice and sing a song cause it's the end in time last time on missed opportunities the crew of Pixie's Fury. Went shopping! <laughs> hey, shopping! We, we didn't get to have any shopping episodes in Curse of Strahd, so I think that we're it's like true. getting it out of our system now in this the, new um, game. Curse of Strahd was like, here, would you like to buy some fresh rat? And we were like, well, no. <laughs> How about no, some thanks. pie made of people? No, no thanks. People pie. That you guys actually bonus. bought that. You get your pie. rat free. <laughs> you guys fed people pie to a priest. Yeah. Which is the backwards of the Sweeney <laughs> thing, but, <laughs> oh, I but love it, this defi game. it definitely happened. People, the, the, the priest's people pie. We've um, all been there. Priestly people pie. Um, have a little priest. That's right, Dr. Spells. You know it. You know it. Um, so, but, all right. Back in Salt Marsh, then after that you went to visit the wizard Kaladak to check out the tower. Um, Melvin had heard of it. Um, he had also informed you that this particular wizard had been there for a little while, as far as he knew, and so he might be a good resource for the party. So you went there. Unfortunately, you were tested before you were um, given any sort of admittance. And even though it took a while, um, Inaris was able to make the right decision. She plunged a dagger into a statue of a sea elf, um, and she chose the right one. Based on their clues, she was able to pick the one who was a deceiver, the one who was a liar. And all of the statues melted away, and the path was made clear for them to enter the tower. Upon which they met Keladek, an almost nearly nine foot tall wizard wearing this tall turban. Thin and imposing, um, he welcomed them in and, well, was interested in hearing what they had to say and why they had come to him. The party did tell them about what they had discovered about the Thalassic League, what, had, what they had assumed to be just mostly a myth or an old sailor's club or something like that. Some more sinister history was revealed. And this was a suspicion that Keladek himself had suspicion of. And some of some old ciphered books that he possessed um, were shown to the party. And as Melvin produced a small stone, which seemed to have some sort of um, connection to an ancient, um, really psychic entity. As the stone was brought closer, the ciphers seemed to solve themselves, mixing into a swirl of text and then settling again in plain, readable common. It was at this point that, um, the wizard Keladek recommended that they go and investigate a little bit further. He was going to read the books, but thought that in order to discern the complete true nature, he would require a, um, and we did get this far, right? That he asked yes. you for two things, yes. right? So he asked for the obelisk that was possessed by Gellin Primewater, and he also needed the body of one of the priests that you 
made known to him. He sensed some sort of connection between the physically transformed nautical beings that seemed to be enacting the will of this thalassic league or um or really the um entity to which the thalassic league was sworn to and so he wanted the body of one as well as this obelisk so he could perform some tests some rituals and discern the true nature of the threat to salt marsh so you all still stand there at the top of the tower. Keledek is still with you, the small room. Um, and uh, this is where we resume. Oh, yeah. Is there anything else that any of you want to inquire of him before we? Think about how we're going to capture a sea priest with an octopus on his face. Because that's um, going to be really easy. Well, he doesn't need it alive, do you? Well, kill. Yeah, but, you know, we don't really know where they live. He thinks about it for a moment and then shakes his head. That will not be necessary, no. How does it matter how long they've been dead? The brain matter should be mostly intact. Ah. So probably won't be able to find, I don't know, one of the ancestors in the Chandler's crypts. No. What, what interests me is this symbiotic connection that you have described to me. The two beings joined together creating a sort of conduit to something that rests far below the waves that is what i need to study it touched me right here if you'd like to examine it a, a what right here i said it touched me right here if you'd like to examine it joe yeah, was on the doll where did it touch you Keledek extends a hand, and as indicating he does, you to come my, closer. Uh, okay, so I'm going to come closer and put a hand out, and as he gets close, uh, my little familiar is going to go shh, come up and try and touch him on the hand, do heart sense. Oh, it's required uh, to touch, is it? I believe it is. Um, let me double check that. Yep, touch is a creature. Most definitely. Gotcha. All righty then. Very nice. Um, let me pull up his page here. And what um, what type of save is it again? Would you charisma mind save? Charisma save. The DC is now fifteen. I have failed. So, so what does is your um, familiar able to sense from Keledek? So current emotional state. Um, but I also get to know alignment. Um, ancestrals, fiends, and undead automatically fail. But okay, failed anyway. Emotional state. Um, your familiar will communicate to you that Keledek is excited. Um, he's almost looking forward to getting rid of you, and his attention is at the books behind you, which seem to be... Um, it, he's very eager to read them, so he's trying to sort of shoo you along if possible. But very excited. Uh, as for alignment, um, he is... Uh, true neutral. Ah, all right. Um, DM, just as, out of curiosity, you've described him as being nine feet tall, correct? Nearly, yes. Nearly? Um, that's, that's pretty tall for, say, like someone who's a human. So I'm sort yes. of curious, you know, what sort of D&D uh, &D, uh, race persuasion they are. What the well, he has um, or... his skin tone is sort of that gray, almost ashen color that you see. Um, he does have a small beard down at the chin. Um, he 
maybe someone from the southern regions of the Sword Coast. But looking at him, I mean, you can't see his ears, but um, based on the facial hair and sort of the the wrinkles and the fact that he's not sculpted like an elf or even a half elf, um, he's just has a narrow, thin face, a sharp nose, um, sort of a sort of a harsh brow line, um, ears covered by the red turban, mm-hmm. but. You see that, but he doesn't look to be non-human to you. Interesting. You, you know, it's really good genes. We have, we have a pretty accomplished scholar of our own. Since there's more than one book, do you think perhaps it might be smart to have both of you working on it at the same time and then trade? And... A, a trade. Well, have you look at one of those books and have our wizard look at another, and then when you're finished, pass them back? Well, what if there is something, what if there's something to cross-reference in these? What if one's a journal and one's a business log? If I didn't have one or the other. All the more reason to have an equitable relationship between us. He he turns around. Make a persuasion check. Yeah. <laughs> Want to roll portent for me, Elena? Oh wait. Uh-huh. <laughs> ah, not this game. Mark, <laughs> mark. Um, All right. right. <sighs> yeah. Oh my. Go ahead and roll it. Crack and die here. I got a high charisma, so. Wait, do I have a? Do I have? Just checking to see if I've got Appalachian elk. Gunslinger is roasting elk right now. I've <gasps> I've had elk once in my oh life, God. but I cannot even remember it. I have well, no it idea like. what smoked no idea. elk is like. It's really it's good, delicious. actually. It's delicious. Yeah, I've so heard best, I've heard it's great. The best uh non standard, <laughs> at least in America, meat that I've ever had, um, game meat like that is actually um mountain sheep, which is amazing. I've never even wow. had venison, so it's really oh, hard. Venison is so good. Uh, I have a 15 on the crack and die. Plus four. Okay. 19. Plus 19? No, plus four. <laughs> no. 19. So 15 is what I rolled. Plus four. Surprise. Total is 19. Wow. Are you an eloquence bard? Um, no. uh, I'm that's... really good at math. Four plus 15 is nine. I believe Eight. you. You have pers- succeeded in your persuasion <laughs> check. Uh, <laughs> that hurts me so no, much. No, that's great. So 19. Um, he looks between the two books and he's just agonizing. Uh, and he quickly closes one of them and hands it to and um, hands it towards Melvin. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, I'll take the book. I'll look inside of it. it is it in common still? It is. Now we have an even stronger interest in keeping contact with you and sharing what we know and vice versa. Well, please, if you can at least index the dates referenced in it, if, if there are any that, and um, chronologically, if possible. Oh, of course. Uh, um, I, ha- I have, and I pull out a small sheaf of different colored papers that I've prepared that are in little like strips. I've, I've prepared Washi these tape. for- Fantasy post-it notes. Washi Fantasy tape. post-it notes effectively, okay. yeah. Okay. Washi tape. Um, for, for easy cross-reference between different parts of the book. This is genius. <laughs> this is genius. Fine, go. I'll read this one. And he well, kind of- Get out of your hair. Bring me the, the squid thing. And the obelisk, yes? Aye, aye. And really that, I don't know what happened between the Prime Waters and the Chandler family, but there's something, there's something wrong there that's been, well. A mystery. There's a lead. It doesn't take any. Either figuratively or literally. (laughs) Bye. (laughs) Bye. Oh, you're still here. Yes, bye. (laughs) <laughs> and he turns back around and starts, uh, and he's got his nose, um, he's stooped over, his... um, uh, reading this, uh, tome, which he has laid out upon the table. 
And you are all um, able to go down the spiral staircase. There's not really a middle floor to this tower. This tower is not one of those that has um, a bunch of different sections upon which there is something interesting. It is really just this top living quarters slash study that he occupies. And then almost lighthouse-like, just a long spiraling staircase that goes all the way down to the bottom. About wizards and towers. Have you ever heard of like a powerful wizard just living in like a, I don't know, a house? Like, mm. well, Melvin, do you have any towerly inclinations? Um, well, it's, it's better than a ship, but I, I don't think that that I would like that tower, you know, out in the middle of the lake and all. Uh, mm. you know, dry land, personally. Oh, okay. So that, that's not an issue of height and more proximity to water then? Oh, I mean, it doesn't really matter where I'm staying. Tower, in house, cave, as long as I have access to books and ink. Mm, I would think caves would be bad because, you know, there's mold and water and your books and scrolls are going to get damaged there's got to be a way to regulate climate if you know i, I guess you just have to be there. you just have to be really powerful or at least know the right spells or hmm. get good piping in a cave cave piping so i'm actually gonna live in a they cave make. i'm gonna make <laughs> it nice you know <sighs> take it for me it's not all it sounds it can be quite vile actually but um thank you debris thank you back to salt marsh back to salt marsh just um where are we outside the tower yet oh uh, yep you're That's exiting terrible. and you now know <laughs> that there is a about four foot wide passage that extends um straight out from the door to the shoreline um, of this little lake upon which the tower uh, or from the island in the middle of the lake upon which the tower is set. Um, if you walk straight, you cannot see anything beneath your feet, but you can walk on sort of a solid invisible surface across this water. Um, once we get back on solid ground, um, I'll turn to the rest of the party and say, um, did anyone else think it was really suspicious how quickly he dismissed the other tower? Yeah. Yeah. It was oh, he, that was weird. It was kind he's, of strange. He's a wizard, isn't he? He he's lived here for a long time. I'm sure he feels some sort of ownership over any sort of secrets that might be around here that he hasn't yet uncovered. I mean, or well, he knows we're down we're not, there. I'm and... saying that we shouldn't check it out, but I'm just saying. Okay. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Um, I do want to raise again. It is kind of an issue that we need to find an octopus priest man. And we don't know where the octopus priest men live. Because the only one that we've encountered was out in the open water and it got swallowed up by big tentacly creatures. So, you know. Just... I have a sneaking suspicion that the longer we follow the various threads that have been presented before us, the more likely it is we're going to encounter more of those things. Fair. So, on the same page then, we're just going to sort of treat that as a it'll show up on our doorstep when it shows up on our doorstep sort of situation. Well, we can perhaps ask various people if they've ever seen anything like that. I certainly haven't, but that's really not saying too, much. It's really too bad that uh, Caleb turned out to be a vampire instead of a talking crab, because I bet he would have had some good insight. I'm sure you think that. He seemed very friendly. That's the nature of magic. Mm. <laughs> I did very once friendly. meet an actual talking crab. What? I swear I wasn't high. It was an actual talking crab. What time? Um, <laughs> Meet the crab. Put in that conversation. Where's um, the, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
it was really, really nice, actually. So when you know, when the kid's like, oh, I have this friend and he's a crab. And I was like, oh, it's going to be a repeat situation like that. Great. Guess not. What? Did it sing? What? Oh, no. you're thinking of the bullfrog. I still don't know where you met this crab. Um, I guess it's here. not important. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, how soon how soon are we thinking about doing all these various things there's some things i kind of want to do in town now that i've got money i've done a bit of it but plans this is my home and i'd like to see to perhaps finding a way to i don't know i don't i don't think i want to stay on the boat place of my you... own like stay on the boat like you don't want to sleep on the boat well i mean it's fine for now but it's a boat yeah it's meant, it's meant to leave i'm not the biggest fan of leaving i mean i understand it's got, got to be done about but, that, but okay <laughs> it's got to be done and but i would like to at least look into the possibility of perhaps i don't know Checking around town for some place that might be for sale that I could buy. That's all. Oh. Hmm, you can teach an the real estate market. <laughs> Not exactly. Oh. I've got a little. An Arison going into <laughs> real estate. <laughs> it's like. She I'm it. so sorry. <laughs> she would be the best. <laughs> It's not just she would have the not best. just a place to stay. There's 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 more to it, but I don't know. I maybe I'll mention we can discuss it at some other hmm. point. But you can think about what it is that you want from a place, and you know, once you sort of sort out your needs, take a look, see, see what's around. Right. But that begs the question: Are we are we leaving soon, or or is there time? DM. I think that that is a sort of question I would turn to you because I thought that we had sort of a floating situation that was floating being situation. resolved by the council that we're kind of waiting on instructions unless I'm really misremembering things, which is very possible. Um, with regarding the council, yes, they are requesting more forces with which to de or with which to deal with the um Sahuigan threat right. um that's been suggested uh but those are on their way they haven't they're kind of at a, at a waiting point or that you know they're, they're just waiting at this point um and well then my proposition here would be that we sort out any immediate business that we might have here in town before we go wandering off to places that have clues about thalassic leagues and weird devil contracts and shit, you know, not actually devils, a separate thing. <sighs> There's a lot going on. Isn't the best place to find one of these squid creatures out to sea? Yeah. Let's hope so. Where to look? Well, we've got stuff to check off on our list before we head back out. So, like, you know, this Chandler situation. And we need to purloin a certain paperweight. Yep. And how That's keen are you to there. examine those runes, Melvin? Is that... I wouldn't be surprised um, if he wasn't lying about the demon or a devil. Well, I'm, I mean, I don't want to go alone, certainly. So I would wait until we win as a group, but I, I don't know. I've, I just think that there might be something there that might be useful, you know? It's, it's supposed to be an old wizard's tower that was sealed away or something. How far long of a journey is that? There was two of us that DM? I can't remember which two of us um got the good insight check on that. I can't remember if I was one or not. On on, on Kaladek. Yeah, Kaladek? There was two. 
Yeah. Um, he... I remember that too. So, in dismissing the idea that there's anything interesting there, you've picked up that he's less than truthful. Um, but it was... At the same time, he seems to be, you would also have then discerned that he's more eager to deal with the current mystery rather than, um, than try to protect that location, if that makes sense. Um, okay. it was more of a casual lie rather than a, um, w w something that he was, um, frantically trying to cover up. And meta ways, there's stuff that I want to do, sort of setting the stage for long term things, but that's personal to Nether. I don't want to um, take up the game doing all that um, unless there's other stuff that other people want to do personal wise in Salt Marsh, in which case we all just spend time doing personal stuff. But if that's not the case, then I'm along for the ride with whatever the group is going to do. Well, seems like Grand Theft Prime Water is on the menu, potentially. Speaking meta, I don't think going to the other tower is an immediate priority. It's just something that we should consider doing at some point. Yeah, totally fair. No, I'm I'm uh I'm I'm about that uh paperweight theft and investigating um <laughs> i know it sounds so epic when you put it that way um yeah so that and um investigating this situation with the prime waters versus chandlers because that almost certainly will have some bearing on our future endeavors right agreement I hear disagreement no I hear no disagreement. Um, as you guys leave the tower, um, it's just on the edge of town. Um, you can see the, the rest of the town buildings. You're maybe just a quarter mile off. And there are a few um, small farmer's huts and some nearer to the coast, some other fishermen's shacks and whatnot. As you are seen leaving, a number of people look at you sort of with alarm and sort of scurry away from your path as you sort of tread this path back away from Kaladex Tower. Um, you you would all notice that, uh, or at least the the those of you with higher passive perception, I'm sure, would point it out. Um, there seems to be a stigma attached to you now as you are leaving the tower at least to the people immediately surrounding it yeah weird okay well back to the downtown salt marsh area where we're gonna scout a place where we're gonna do a thief <laughs> is this sure. a song that's native to to your people or... Oh no! This is I'm just also... the fact that I like can't not sing things. This is this is <laughs> oh, like the right, the, the, the detritus of my brain coming mm -hmm. out in song. It's yeah, because that's your job. Okay, thank you. <laughs> oh, I feel so judged, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> Being a amazing. singer is not a real job. <laughs> 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 that got really That's real. it. Yeah. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I had a, I had a singing gig today. It's a real job. Oh hey, good job. Um <laughs> uh, anyway. Um <laughs> who wants to scout out Prime Water's place? I don't think I should be the one for that. Um, I can follow along and offer assistance, but I'm I'm not probably the person to do that. Hey, uh, Peter, what's in the immediate vicinity of Prime Water's house? Like, so for this, we can take a look at mm. uh, 
uh, the, the map true the map, map here map and map. take a little look see um all right has it loaded for all of you yeah beautiful Ooh, um though it doesn't look quite as big as the others let me put this in some text mm -hmm. right here this orange building you see um is the prime water okay estate um so what are these buildings immediately around it Like this one, this one, these ones. Um, they are. Uh, let's see. I'll make this bigger. Um, so to the south, that is Prime Waters. Uh, sort of a um, I guess just warehouse would be okay. the best way to say it. Um, he is his business, as you know, is um involved in a lot of trade import export type of things so yeah. a lot of crates a lot of barrels um <laughs> crate and barrel i don't know <laughs> uh, a lot of he lives across from a, crate a lot and of barrel. very expensive home goods <laughs> you did it again peter bring it back there around a go. crate and barrel <laughs> gosh man you can get these really cute little rice bowls um they're only like 40 dollars a set of four oh my god that um, is so so nice <laughs> you will feel like it's the real thing um and so north these other buildings are actually just uh other houses um oh, okay different residences okay and the the two gray topped buildings or blue whatever whatever this more houses um there is a fisherman's guild that is across the way um, called the Mariner's Guild Hall. Um, they don't like have a hangout place in there. Like, is there a place inside where the fishermen like? We shouldn't plan any out? sort of a heist <laughs> anywhere where anyone can overhear us, right? No, no. So the the, the what I'm kind of gunning for is is there? I'm looking for a place where we can just observe. Like, what's the pattern of people moving in and out of the house of the Prime Water Manor? You know what's the what's the state of the security stuff like that? Where's where's Maybe? the nice little coffee house cafe with the outdoor yeah. seating that we can just? Where I can sit there with my sunglasses on, reading a paper. Totally. Yeah. Let's do the, it. The incredibly conspicuous people who just left the Tardox shower. <laughs> Maybe also the Fisherman's Guild may have some insight about where we could find a squid-faced priest. <laughs> Maybe they've seen them in their journey. I don't know. There you go. I, I, again, I, based, based on where we've just walked from and as far as the rest of the group, the, the city is concerned, I I don't know if that's the best line of questioning we should ask openly. Oh. It lessens have, to have the... Have you seen um, any well, lately? I've the, been told that there's no such thing as a stupid question. And oh, Lord. I don't know. Well, that's stupid. <gasps> Who told you that? They were stupid. I have so many mixed I have feelings to about this debate. My notes. There is such a thing as a stupid question. Yes. Thank you. Write that down <laughs> and box it. I've already written it down. <laughs> Good. There will be a time. The the eyes on you looking questioningly have diminished somewhat. Um, it was really only those that directly saw you leave the tower or were nearby and could t clearly tell you were walking from the tower that were concerned. Right now, it doesn't look like anyone's looking um, any differently at you, but you can only assume, depending, you know, the way that sailors scuttle butt that, um, that you had recently gone to the tower oh, might be common knowledge soon. I will also say that the Solmore estate does have um, one or two um, corner rooms, which are sort of up on almost like turrets on either side of the manse mm -hmm. that uh, could, and it, the estate itself is up on a hill. So would give you at least um, some vantage point if you were willing, if you were wanting to uh, have a 
bird's my eye or not bird's eye, but a um, is high up view. My only question would be, what, why? Why do we need? What are we trying to observe? We've been in the house. We've seen the um, way to his study. We know where he keeps it. Yeah, but we don't really know. Or as far as I'm aware, we don't really know what the standard like, you know, in and out of people in that somebody, house is. Somebody who can move very quietly and who's invisible should go in and take it. And run into no issues and not be entirely prepared. You know, I feel like the more information you have, the safer you're going to be. Maybe he'd give it yeah. to us if we just asked for it. I doubt that very much. I don't think there's any harm in asking. I think there's it was a, a lot good of harm suggestion, in Milton. Well, I was wondering if that? we just Only... tell him that that it's the reason he's getting those really bad headaches, and that we want to take it to get mm. it like cleansed or something. I think that we should not be associated at all with the paperweight. Like in his mind, there should be no connection between weird group of assholes. And Who's paperweight. The weird group of assholes. Well, it's us. Case, We're the weird group of no. assholes. <laughs> in, that, in that case, then it shouldn't just be that that's stolen, given that he just showed it to us, and then suddenly it turns mm -hmm. up missing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. What are we going to do about brief. Jolette? Melvin's got a good idea, though. Jolette? My former paramour. <laughs> it, it, it might have sentimental value to him but if it's causing him headaches i mean that would certainly be an incentive to get rid of it or maybe even just let us borrow it for a bit so we can make it stop giving him headaches i'm gonna, I'm gonna throw a throw a curveball in there um if it is indeed the same material as the weird ass obelisk on the ship and that thing that Melvin has that has some like weird psychic connection to an otherworldly being that like turns you into weird monsters with like tentacles coming out of your shoulders. Um, I suspect that he doesn't, if he's had it as long as he has, he, there's probably some sort of connection between him and the paperweight that he's not conscious of. But I, I would, I would be surprised if he would let it go. I don't think that the connection that he most likely has with it would allow him to let it go. Mm. Well, we could try to haunt him. I don't know. Uh, so, uh, what? <laughs> there's a lot of people here who have powers that might convince him that it is the problem. I don't know. It just I, I'm, I'm kind of in favor. Ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> We're the you ghosts just of hire salt marsh. Some of the ghosts of salt marsh to do it. It's us. In the end, we solved it. Um, Mariah, didn't, didn't files you, are um, in the computer. <laughs> didn't you? Didn't you do something to? To, to debris the other day to make her do what you wanted um didn't you do that to prime water i did except that he would like he'll still remember that it happened and there's also no guarantee that it'll work <laughs> so i'm i'm still really in favor of just you know simple stakeout Figure out what the security looks like on the outside so that we know to, what to avoid and when. And then send someone in invisibly because we can do that. Um, who knows what to avoid and when. Steal a bunch of other shit and then leave. <laughs> You're making it worth your while, huh? <laughs> well, no, I think that the very fair point was made that if we don't want this to be about the paperweight, Yes. That we have to steal other things in that addition to the paperweight. It comes down to do we do we <laughs> do we rob and risk being hanged for the sake of a paperweight? Is, or do is, we is, just ask for it? Yeah, could I, I just I don't really 
really feel great about stealing. It's not it's not the right thing to do. Is is that the punishment for, for thieves in Salt Marsh? It is. It's, well, also, I not, don't not for, for every stealing. theft, but I I strongly suspect that if we were found stealing not just a family heirloom but a lot of other things from Gellin Primewater, that the penalty would be severe. So we have to not get caught, which means we have to know what we're avoiding. Why can't we just we take are it? somewhere secure, right? We're not just talking all about all I, this. I was we hoping would that we would go yes. there. But we would not okay. be talking Middle of the about street. this in front of a bunch just of other people. Making sure. Middle of the street. Yeah. Can I'll say I... that. I totally got that. You're <laughs> just walking down the street. So <laughs> why not we <laughs> I mean hiding in plain sight, right? We shouldn't so steal. You see there. those gallows right there. We'll last totally place. end up on those if we do what we're planning to do at this very moment ah. in this conversation. <laughs> in our very secret conversation. Those of you who haven't seen, by the way, the, uh, the, the conversation of the ghosts of Saltmarsh, the idea that you are all the ghosts of Saltmarsh is kind of my favorite thing that I've read in, <laughs> in the theory crafting chat. That would be a twist. You guys are all what Bruce if... Willis. And... Yeah. <laughs> what if this is just six cents? That'd be great. Spoilers. Oh. Oh, that's my really, God. <laughs> that's amazing. I love that idea. Ne Nether turns, guys, spoilers. Nether turns to, uh, um, to Naris and says, So, have you ever stolen anything? Me? No, That's never. Exactly what a thief would say. Have you borrowed stuff without permission? I've never stolen anything. Wasn't asking you. Never. Of it. We were offering. Never that. stolen. Of course, I've stolen shit. I'm a thief. Well, then we should be taking your advice on this. I'm 100% for stealing it. Why ask and risk a no when you can steal it and it's always yes? <laughs> Why risk a no when you can when you can risk a noose? So, <laughs> so what should we do? Steal the damn thing. Stay How do out, we do that? Stay out, stay out. <laughs> can I just stay outside? We can try a stake out and... Whenever I mean, it gets dark. If you're the one going in to get it, do you need any more information? I need to know where it is and what sort of guard is around it. Well, where are you in the room? Wasn't she in the room when we saw yeah. it? Yeah. You know yeah. where it is, unless I've it gets moved. I've slept since then. Peter, was the room that um <laughs> that his office is in? Is that a first floor or a second floor? Second floor. Is there a Do window? you forget things when you yeah, sleep? Yeah, I was like, you forget when you like when you <laughs> sleep. Not a very That's a cool question. character choice. I was you like, oh, just figuring it out date. now. Fifty first date. <laughs> fifty first date. I was just thinking that she wakes up and reads her thing, reads her <laughs> oh. journal. Yeah. It's like, right, oh okay. yeah, this is where we're at today. It's exactly what happens. False. It okay. it is like that Gandalf meme too. I have no memory of this one. It's like when you no load up a save game. game in a in a in a role playing game after a few weeks. Oh. It's like, well, I guess I guess we're starting over. <laughs> I am all for um, a every time I play uh, a stakeout as long as um, you know the DM is up for it. Uh, yeah. So of course, <laughs> why not? Um, uh, yeah. Here's kind of an idea of what the Prime Water Manor generally looks like. And he has this little office area up on the second floor here, oh. which is a as a second floor window. Um, Isn't that that place where he can like literally walk out and just like observe his like mercantile He mostly domain. leans over the balcony and points <laughs> and shouts things. But yes, you saw that window when you went up to his study. Cool beans. Yeah. Um, and it's, again, this is not a perfectly accurate image. There is a bit of sloped and uh, shingled roofing that is directly beneath that window that he opens up and sort of leans out of and shouts things from. How high up is that window? 
It's a second floor, but it's sort of a grand manor, so probably closer to 15 feet rather than, uh, or actually 20 feet rather than the regular 10 that you would go up to a second story. That's steppable. 20 feet. You say steppable? Yep. Maybe for Keladek. <laughs> In a misty way. <laughs> Aha! Okay, we're talking misty steps. Yeah. If we're going to do this this way, we need to make sure that we can get it out of our hands as quickly as possible. I you mean, mean over to yes. Kaladek? Yes. Because I'm sure Galen Primewater has access to magic that would allow him to find such things. True. Mm. We want to make a distraction. I mean, right. I could definitely make a distraction like in the port with the water. I think Sarayan should distract him. <laughs> I will with throw this column. out there too. I believe you guys are moored on the prime water dock. Are we? I thought, I thought so. we were in the I believe the last, the last time you set sail was on a task for him. And you came back and were tied up oh. at the prime water dock. So your that's ship totally where we is from. right um, right next to his uh, manor on his private or his family dock. Yeah, oh, well, that makes thing, everything easier. Does it? Yeah, Something goes missing? Watch from our own boat. Okay. I was going to say... I don't want to oh no, that doesn't boat. solve the issue of where we what we do with the paperweight, but it just means that we have an easier place to watch from. That is, yeah, just have a, like a deck side yeah. picnic. <gasps> so so Ryan can entertain us. What would you need to know in order to be happy with doing this? Sorry, Sean, I can barely hear you. I'm being very mysterious with my voice. <laughs> I was like, you're so <laughs> mysterious. It's that black I'm shirt. Joking. It's not what I do. <laughs> um, so, uh, so what, Neris, what would you need? You've just been hired to do a job. Mm -hmm. What do we do first? Or should we just stay out of your way? Yes, and I would... Usually I'm given a guard schedule, if there is one. I need to know when shift changes, how often they come and go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Basic thievery things. Do you want to go in by yourself or do you need a backup? Because I've, I've, I've done a, a thievery or two before. You? Also, uh, yeah. uh, 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 <laughs> oh my God, what a shock. Your okay. heart might give out. <laughs> it might. I would have never pictured you as a, a thievery style. All right. I mean, it's not my ideal way of doing things, but, you know, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> sure. Okay. Talise, hey, but okay, I can stay outside. Something Blow something up. Draw their attention away. I mean, alternatively, Serene can go in and, you know, try to distract Prime Water by asking him about the history of something. Well, I'm actually very interested in the history of the house. It's a really interesting state. You should ask him about his wallpaper. I it think as few really people cool attached wallpaper. to this group as possible should be anywhere with any sort of but context of this. I don't want to be involved because stealing is wrong and I'm not going to do it. So, ah, I have a wow. bunch of reading to do, so I think I'll stay on the ship. Can I stay and read with you? Hmm. Sure. Do I ask yeah, I'm gonna a philosophical with... question about moral right and wrong, or do I leave it for another time? Leave it for another time. Leave it for What's another time. <laughs> Serene's <laughs> boat. <laughs> leave it. Well, we could all right. So we need somebody. You need somebody who's super observant watching. Who's gonna do that? <sighs> I have good perception. I could watch outside. I have, I was like, I'm, it used to be like when Nene and I would work together, I was the one that would always kind of keep a lookout. And then I would be the one that would make a distraction. Uh, 
usually through prayer, but whatever. Well, then you, know. you should that just do this. The two of you should handle this. Do it the way you want. Fine with me. Uh, Talisa, I have a question. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Were you gonna ask me so it's about, like a character about, of mine. about like you know saying like something about thievery and religion and what? Just just tell me what. It was really it was just a question about the nature okay. of your god or goddess. I don't know what your what your situation is, um, but I can ask later. You could ask someone else. Yeah, I'll ask someone else. I I would. <laughs> Okay. My, my, I just, for the record, my goddess approves stealing of all forms, so. Yes. Okay. Yes, she does. Thank you. Well, have at it, you two. Let us know when you're ready, and we'll try to help as best we can without being involved. Oh, so they're trying to get us hung. That's pretty cool. Yeah. 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 Sweet. Well, uh, let's tell them how we do this shit. I wish it were dark, though. I blend in better. Well, then we yeah. can wait till it's dark. But in the meantime, I was absolutely being serious about having a picnic on the deck. So I'm going to buy some food. Okay, you do that and I'll get ready. And then I'll just start mapping out where the guards are. And we'll get that ready. Um, If you guys wait till tomorrow, I can make you invisible. I can make them invisible now. Oh, there you go. That'll work. But will you? If that's oh, what the um, group decides, I would come, love come to me before invisible. you come to me before you go in. Okay, right before, I'll have something to help you as well. We're gonna be rich. Just make me invisible for just a little bit. That's all I need. So while the picnic is happening and while staking out is happening, um, I'm is it? Say, are they? Are they one in the same though? I mean, proxy. Proxy Posse brought up before the idea of a stake out spelled the other way. So it can be a dual picnic and sure. stakeout. I just loved that, and it made me really happy. Yeah, I, we I have feel like that's out. up to Mariah when she's yes. buying the food. What groceries. kind of food does Mariah buy for All the stakeout? All salad. Just I... best food. <laughs> <laughs> like, like a really shitty wedge salad, too, with like a oh, terrible no. bit of ice. Come on, I've got better taste than that. I like that <laughs> tomato that when you bite into it, you just regret, you know, yeah. like that the regret cherry tomato. You know what that kind of tomato. Oh. God, yeah. the this tomato right. tastes like a raw potato. <laughs> well, no, well, you know, we'll we'll get what we'll get what's fresh, local. You know, su support our local vendors. Fair trade, yeah. Yeah. So it's gonna be seafood. <laughs> well, Not no, but I, I like a good cut of steak anyway. So you know, I'll get some of that too. Tuna steaks are good. That's Not steak. actually re it, it. It still is, but okay. Swordfish steaks. Um, possible burger, please. Thank can uh, uh, can, no. can I send no. Doll around? Um, I have things that I'm trying to uh, find out about Prime Water. Is this a good time to do that, DM, or would it be better to wait till later? Sure. So, right. So, Mariah, well, you know, briefly, Mariah, you're gathering some food. Um, <laughs> up to you, you can say what what whatever it is. I don't know if you're bringing the full compliment or if it's just like trail mix or whatever i do want to know, know what like food you is, go to get this is proper food like okay. i'll get i'll get some i i will get some vegetables like i don't know so we can get some like crudite going on um Ooh. and <laughs> um some cheese out. uh some uh, some fruit uh do, do we do apples in this in this region? <laughs> um, I think apples do, do not exist in the egg. Forgotten Realms. I can't believe you didn't know that. Um, I was also but... going to say, I think if we do crudite, like an okay. apple is not that far. <laughs> well, um, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Here's so, a question. Wait, yeah. but before we go for I had another. I'm still thinking about how to how we how we're possibly going to do this and not and to try and avoid um, any repercussions. What if we replace it with something? Do we have the ability to make something that would be could could pass for it? Indiana Jones style? Well, I mean, hopefully it's not trapped in that way, but I mean, if it is causing him problems. Hey, wasn't Melvin going to ask him 
uh, ask ask um Kelleduck about getting something? Didn't you actually? Oh, that's ask right. He did actually week? ask that at the very end yeah. of the last session, whether or not a replica could be made. Yeah. <sighs> oh yeah, I totally forgot about that. Oh my god! Yes. <laughs> did say yes. Oh okay. okay. Perfect. And um, as you guys are sitting, the owl comes and <laughs> at this picnic. <laughs> um, Melvin, you feel a sort of tap on your shoulder, and then suddenly, it's wherever you're sitting, enjoying this picnic, you feel a heavy weight of like two feet setting sitting on your thigh on your leg and uh you hear you all around here hear a voice that says hey boss says to give you this thing says he forgot and then suddenly clanking down is what seems to be just a black stone obelisk that clanks to the ground and then you hear this like flapping noise and you're all right do you need me to tell him anything else are you good divine oh, thank, sense thank you i don't have divine sense <laughs> i was gonna say you don't have that right um cool okay does bye. it look <laughs> does it bye. look like the uh the illusion i showed him yeah mm -hmm. it looks pretty good oh there we go indiana jones style so now we don't have to steal anything else. That's true. There's totally crab wine, by the way. Claw wine. So there's claw, claw wine. wine. That crab is wine, the, claw uh, wine, whatever. we had a, uh, MCR had a surf and turf suggestion and that can yeah. be the surf part, the wine, right. which is very yeah. unusual, but it, it works. That works. <laughs> Get your brine and your, you know, it's like a little, like, Pink, Your you know, wine? perfectly pink shrimp. It's like a shrimp rosé, you know? I don't know. Amazing. Yeah? That sounds revolting. Shrimp rosé. My stomach literally <laughs> turned. I just, yeah, like, literally, like... You know, that should definitely be something offered at wineries. Or, and or if you go to crab, but that not. darker red, so you've got, like, one of those wow. true, like, heavy Provence ones that are, like, really dark pink. Yeah. Ouch. Mm -hmm. I just hit my... Yeah, See, that was instant, yeah. instant karma for suggesting some of this. <laughs> I didn't do it. It's the module. All right, guys. None of this. Is me. All right. So stakeout happens. Um, surf and turf happens. You guys are. You have the uh, the duplicate or the dummy to insert, and now it is beginning. It is now that time of evening where the. Um, <laughs> the the it has become that time of evening rather Thank you. where the uh um sun is starting to go down twilight is starting to come about the lamp lighters are walking the streets beginning to light the oil lamps and such and so for anyone who might have a problem with thievery now that we're not stealing it we're replacing it with something that's going to do the exact same job and not be dangerous it's actually an altruistic thing we're doing if you think about it. This seems like an honorable mission now. That it all depends on whether or not Inara steals anything else. I well, I don't, don't think that's anyone's an... business. Um, it kind of is. Yeah, it kind of is. No, I really. thought this was a democracy. That, that depends. <laughs> if, if she steals something and gets caught, do we all get hanged or just her? Just her, just her. Well, see, that's the problem. It's going to be really, really hard, given how close knit we've become, at least to the public facing view of late. Um, Ooh, that that's, it, we're very close. I think you're great, but you know, I, I don't know if that's if everyone else feels the same. A lot way about of people me. don't like me. Gee. I don't know where you got that idea from. Um, uh, anyway, the point being, since we seven have been working together then everyone who looks from the outside is going to be like, oh, they're all friends and they're part of the same crew, blah, 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 blah. And then if Nene gets caught, and it's going to be really, really hard to convince anyone who's looking at this that we weren't involved just Unf by association. Unfortunately, it won't be that hard. 
Well, there's also the huge, huge, huge issue of me getting caught. What do you mean? Well, so She's far she has a 100% um, success rate. You know, that's, that's why. Oh, so you're saying it? it's not an issue. No. Okay. No. That wasn't clear to me. It's an um, issue. Mm-hmm. It's a moot point. It's like a cow's opinion. It doesn't the, matter. Uh, look, I can, I can make you even quieter before you go in and you're going to be invisible until you do something stupid. Um, so it's going to be fine. <laughs> like at the office. <laughs> Good luck. Okay, okay, okay. Did we learn anything from the stakeout? Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like you guys have been talking the whole time, but No, uh, we're totally you, you watching. Said, like, watching. Who is watching and trying to um discern guard all that? Okay. Uh perception checks please for those of you on um, the Kraken. While while they're oh. rolling that DM, I would have been um oh, transcribing some spells in my spell book. I rolled a 15 cool. as well on a 7. Okay. I'm going to roll I will my say, I'm Just so crap. you know, those of you uh, rolling here, it's been about, it'll take about two hours as the, the sun goes down between now and dark. You're kind of watching. Um, unless you have a full... You got a 19 plus 6. Got a 21. Okay. So 25 and a 21. Cool. I'm hearing some high perception rolls. That's great. Um, those of you who have burglared in the past, um, especially in a uh, done so professionally, would know that it's tough not having a full day in advance because you can only really predict the changing of the guard if you've seen um, how the guard changes at a particular time during a particular day. So you can see a changing of the guard and think, all right, right now it's these guys, but... um, you, you you might be able to get a sense of okay every two hours or whatnot, but with so perception check twenty, you do see that there is a sort of foreman that seems to be making an inspection about every two hours. He checks on all of the guards. He looks through the warehouse. Um, it looks like he does a quick um, inventory check and checks the locks about once every two hours. That's what you're able to determine. Otherwise, there are, um, you did see, you're not able to see the front of the house from where you are right now, but you did see four guards leave, um, relaxed looking. Um, they did not have their, uh, full, their weapons. It looks like they left their weapons somewhere within the prime water complex it looks like they're going home and you saw before that four other um armored individuals approach so it looks like four guards um arrived and four guards left about an hour ago likely the night shift the i will also say that the alleyways around prime water manor are dimly lit they are not most there are not many spots of complete darkness there is a dim light coming from the window itself that you have pointed out that his study is in there is also dim light emanating from the frosted windows nearby it which would be an area behind a closed door that room's content is something you do not have any information of. That's about what you're able to discern. Good checks, but you're still sort of, you know, from your ship's deck or from the crow's nest. um, You're still a bit far away. Cool beans. Are you ready, kids? really had to fight that knee-jerk reaction. Hi, <laughs> hi, uh, Captain. Well, I think we're ready. Thank you. <laughs> I say Mariah is the captain. I know it was going to be perfect, but I wasn't. Um, so if Nene's getting ready to skedaddle, 
at the point at which she is ready to do so, I will cast Enhance Ability upon her. Um, All right. And I'm actually going to upcast it. Let's see here. Um, Talis, what is the extent of your distractionary duties? <laughs> like, do you need to be sneaky? No. No, so I'm you- not. I'm not. I'm not all that sneaky, so I don't really try. Okay. But you yeah, know, just in case, anyway. So people I'm- don't pay attention as soon as I put my investments on. They just kind of block me out until I get really loud and then they oh. pay attention to me and that draws all the attention away. You know, people kind of ignore me, especially in port towns. They just see me as another Valkor follower that's wandering oh. through. And then I put they on get a show. awkward around religion, huh? Yeah. Yeah. That's why okay. I still have these things. I don't really like to wear them, but I have them. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so... I will upcast enhance ability on and do um, cat's grace on uh, Nene and just just in case there's an issue on Talise as well, um, if she consents. Um, and uh, they will have advantage on dexterity checks and not take falling damage for 20 feet or less as long as they are not incapacitated. Cool. So that is my contribution to the heist. Right, after you've made the switch, as long as the thing that you're getting, the obelisk, is... Oh, how heavy is it, DM? We don't know. Oh, the the, oh. Uh, the fake one? Yeah. The decoy? No. Um, it's probably like two and a half pounds. It's like, it's fairly... It feels weighty in the hand. It's solid, it's solid stone. Pro- maybe closer to five. Five pounds. It's hefty. In the most dire of circumstances, I could potentially get it over to um, what's his name? Zardarek? Keladek. 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 Uh, I could maybe get it over there, but uh, that's a little too heavy. It would be difficult, but possible. Um, but uh, I'm going to, um, I'll be watching. Inaras, if we do decide to take anything else, just remember that may raise an alarm. If we're just switching things out, nobody will ever know. <laughs> she says nothing. <laughs> Sorry to be a party pooper. Fully. So and she just walks off. <laughs> as she does, um, Nether touches her throat and she touches Inaris and says, And they both disappear. Inaris, you are now invisible. Don't worry, guys. This is not going to go to her head at all. <clears throat> <laughs> sippy, sippy. So, all right, you step off the ship. You can hear the footsteps very slightly on the gangplank as she steps her way down onto the deck. Right. Interesting. Is anyone else going with her? Well, so, I'm, Doll is I'm, going and watching her. Is Nether herself Nether is going. invisible and Doll is also invisible. Okay. Who's Nether? Um... I am going to um, stay near the ship on the dock area and just kind of casually hang out and keep an eye on things. I will be staying on the ship, but send in Eolak, and I will be going into a trance. Okay. I'm going to slowly mosey on down like a minute or two after Nene heads out. Okay. Mosey with the crowd. What is the duration on invisibility? Ten minutes? It is wow. ten minutes indeed. Yeah, it was an that's hour. what that's the other reason why I'm staying hour. with uh 
dun, 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 dun. One hour. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> one hour. She got this. Okay. So, Ineris and Nether, where do the two of you go? I'm following Ineris. I'm not going to say a word. I suppose we're going to head straight to where we need to go. But Ineris would take any, any, even though she's invisible, she would still, out of habit, take any back alleys and do her best just not to leave any footprints, any trace, anything. Sure. Um... So walking up the, the docks are not, um, the end of the dock where your ship is, is not really an area that's well patrolled. But when you start to get to the, f they're more, these are almost more like piers than just regular docks. Um, lots of large ships could dock at them. There could even be buildings built upon them there. They're large. When you get towards the shore, you will sort of go past on your left this warehouse that i talked about before one of the places that the foreman checked there is a large sort of sliding barn door there that has a lock and chain upon it and two gas lanterns um, on either side there is one guard just sort of standing there um looking about and you can see ahead of you now um the prime water house on each of its corners is another gas lantern. There are shadows, there are areas of dim light, but there, um, the manor itself is pretty well set apart. There are no um, black, completely pitch dark alleys abutting up to the house. Right, just... Stay close. Don't make any noise, and even though there's light, stay out of it. So, um, I think that it, it looked to me like that building that that if as long as I stayed s relatively close to the building, that I would be within one hundred feet of the room that she was going to go into. Probably yes. All right. Yeah. Because. Uh, I can cast certain spells through my familiar as long as I'm within 100 feet of the familiar. Okay. So that's my only goal in being here and being invisible is to A, be able to see what's happening and B, be able to hopefully affect change if necessary. Understood. So where are you... Um... Where are you going um, in the uh, in Eris then? So, and Nether, you said you are. You mentioned Whatever the I can building. be that's clearly out of the way, uh, like nobody's going to just walk into me. That puts me one hundred feet from wherever I think that an Eris is going to go. Okay, so you can kind of like sit on the edge of a, uh, um, sit kind of on the edge of the building where it would be quiet, sort of mm -hmm. around the corner. Just like really, well, not nearly as small as I used to be. Try to make myself as small as possible. To avoid, because once once doll goes up, I'm not going to have eyes on where I am. So I want to make sure I'm someplace that no one will be just walking up randomly. Sure. Crawl under some steps or something. Okay. Um, yeah, so... There will, there's an area of um, what look to be some empty broken crates, almost like broken pallets, looks mostly like junk wood and such along the, the corner, the opposite side of where you came. So closer to the salt marsh city itself, where you could kind of um, hunker down and try to be quiet and try to be unseen there. Cool. Now... Ineris, you hear, you feel um, Nether sort of move around to the side of this building, and then you hear no more sound from her. Could you please, Ineris, make a stealth check as you begin to move closer to the house? Yes. At advantage because of invisibility. Indeed. I'm sorry, what now? 
at oh, advantage God. because you are invisible. I have expertise in stealth. Ugh. All right, so 16. 16? Yes, 16. Because I have a plus nine. That's still not great. For a Is thief. That a advantage? Yeah, she rolled a natural one. She rolled a one. And then wow. The start. Yeah. So it can't get worse. Um, 16. You can make it around the corner of the house. And you see then the four guards that made themselves, um, well, sort of known by your scouting. They are standing there in a, um, just, well, all four of them. And uh, you see a um, steps leading about five feet up and then the large double doors, which you know lead into the interior of the Prime Water Manor, a place that you have been before. They just kind of sit there, making casual conversation. Um, one is smoking a pipe, just kind of looking around. And the four of them just casually sit in front. Um, I will pull you down to the front of the home. If you would like to place yourself in front of the steps, you do not feel as if you have been seen or heard at this point. He's not been noticed yet. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to go into the front door. So. Isn't this where. Are we going to get a distraction of some sort? Says a voice in your ear. There's a signal. Uh, we need no. to make the distraction. Now would be a good time for a distraction. That's not the Oh, caca, caca. Okay. The guards start and to sort of look around like, but... <laughs> you need a lozenge. <laughs> <laughs> Upon hearing that strange raven call, <laughs> Talise outside will like fix her vestments. <laughs> yeah, she goes, vestment, vestment. And she kind of pulls back her cloak so you can see all of the amazing lightning and embroidery along her along her vestment. And she goes. The raven call, my brothers and sisters, hear the ravens call to us. They cry as they return to their cliffside nests and their calls mingle with the sounds from the, from our mighty Valkor. She goes, the mighty Valkor. I know. <laughs> uh, the waves, the sea breeze and the gentle roar of a storm far off among the mighty depths. These are the gifts that our great Lord Valkor has given us, so brothers and sisters. And she's just sort of like, <laughs> like trying to like work everybody up and like draw them away. And I know that, there's like five people out there. <laughs> that's amazing. Um... <laughs> All right. Um, hmm. I'm going to exit stage left while she's doing that. And I make, wanna... uh, please make a um, performance check. Oh, I was like, don't say performance. No, it should be an advantage. No, it, it was pretty good. It, uh, for the purpose it was supposed to serve, it's, uh, yeah, it's damn good. distracting. I... Yeah. <laughs> Am I advan am I advantaging then? I um, said that and I'm confused. Yeah. Tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> non DM, yeah. <laughs> um no, but you can add your wisdom modifier instead of your charisma modifier because you did a wonderful job of um using all of the Vulker points for this uh, particular <laughs> string of 
I don't know, street <laughs> sermoning. So I... <laughs> if there was a TV, you know she would be on there. Televangelism oh, yeah. all the way. Okay. You With would, my quack and dice. You would blow those guards out of the way. <laughs> Go back. Uh, okay, so I got 14 with my wisdom, so that's a 17. Great. Um, yeah. You see, you uh, they look around in confusion and uh, what? The, they, they get distracted and three of them sort of move off to the side to um, confront you. Not what I thought. <laughs> the other one kind of takes a couple steps forward and looks back at the door and then just is kind of looking up curiously like oh what's going on over there well, I want to I want to be the one to go rough up the drunk cleric but um dutifully stays a little with, bit closer to the like, door at least floating as blue these, hair yeah yeah as these three move off and start to sort of um uh uh get in your face a little bit What's the, right. you got to move on from here. There's people sleeping inside that house. Well, they shouldn't be sleeping. They should all be out here praising our great Lord Volker on whom all of our economy depends. Right? You've, right? You've had too much claw wine. I mean, yeah, I did because, you know, that's what we're famous for here and it's delicious, right? It just makes you want to go, woof, 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 woof. It's so good. I, I mean, I, I like it. it a lot, but. Yeah, I like it a lot too. This is this is why we're such good friends, and this is why I know that you are a true believer of Valker. As I hit my microphone, because I am so taken with his power in this moment. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god, Valkor. Exactly. They are just kind of listening to your words, just endlessly ring out here, and a little bit confused. And uh, yeah. Eh, yeah, you've got them. Um, you've you've got the better of three of them, Inaris. It is your turn. And nobody clipped this, but I am looking for any hole that I can get into. <laughs> Someone clip that right now. So there's a double door here. There are windows to the right and to the left. There is sort of this nook style set of windows here with three of them in this little protrusion. And there are also windows along this hallway. I'm going for the, the hallway. Going for the windows along the hallway. All right, Nether, you can see Inaris um, near the door starting to make uh, make a I beeline can't. for... I can't see her. You're right, you can't. Um, <laughs> if I could, that would be something Never very, mind. very wrong. It would be very, very wrong. Um, so there are three sets of double windows here, Inaris. Uh, there's one, two, three... They are large, um, sort of arching windows that take up about, I guess, it's probably about five feet tall with a little nice pointed gothic arch at the top. Very stylish. Very nice architecture. So, and looking inside, you can see very, the um, hallway is dimly lit. And you recognize the interior, having been in there before. You know that the room continues here, and that there are um, stairs here. I'm going to give you, guys, you the benefit of the doubt, because you guys have been in this um, location multiple times. However... What is, um, we will, uh, I will use descriptions to describe what is, uh, what you see besides what you just remember. So, but I am, you cannot clearly see this in the darkness from your angle, but these are, what I'm revealing are f locations you're sort of familiar with inside these hallways and this double stairway leading up. Hello. Just... Being right there, you hear the sort of plodding sound of a guardsman walking down this particular hallway. Who comes to about here as you're stopped at the window and then wheels about and goes back. He then opens a door right here 
and disappears into what seems to be a library type room. I immediately check quietly to see if the window's locked. Um, as you sort of try and push against it, it doesn't budge. There are hinges that indicate that it can be opened to get better airflow, um, but it does not move. These tools. Is there any way I can? Uh, da, 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 I've got spikes. Oh, what if I take my soap and rub them over the hinges and try to oil them with soap? Well, okay, so that may be my fault in the description. Um, it could be locked. I'm just saying that there is no um, there's no exterior um, latch because that doesn't make sense for a window. Um, and just as you're trying to just manipulate it, basically, it does not move. It's either stuck or latched or locked or all three. Okay, I'll try the one next to it and see if it's also. Well, would thieves tools be give her the yeah, the tools you, that would be, to, yeah. yeah. So okay. yes, um, that that's what you would use to um, try to circumvent the latching or any lock on the other side. Okay. That's correct. Um, and investigating these sort of six windows as they are spread across the grand front of the house here, each one seems to be locked or at least sealed in the same manner. Damn rich people. Um... I think the damn I you am... can use your toes on it, though. Yeah. I'm going to go back to this one here because it gives me the most cover, and I'm going to try to use my thieves' tools to get that open. All right. Make a thieves' tools check. Thieves' tools check. At advantage. I have to say, um,. A non lone ranger. I also like rum soaked fruit cakes. The ones that when you bite into them, they're just a little boozy. Those are delicious. Old school. Definitely old fashioned, but that's all right. Yeah. My grandma used to get those. When they were wrapped in like the cheesecloth and stuff, and you can just smell it as you unwrap it. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. That's some good stuff. All while right. Wait, Inaris. While we're waiting for Inaris, we have a giveaway going, guys. Exclamation mark giveaway to enter. $15 of the Kraken Dice store credit and also another one after that, which is a $10 one. Inaris, are you proficient in sleight of hand? Yes. Okay. Your Thieves Tools check in that case um, would be the same as your sleight of hand. So you can <laughs> roll sleight of hand. have expertise in either of those. Do I have expertise in either of those? Should have expertise and thieves tools. I have never used tools before, so bear with me just a second. That'd be unfortunate if you were an expert and not used it before. Anaris has. Chael has not. It's like that liberal arts degree feels bad. Sorry. <laughs> Man. Rude. Wow. Uh, Man. Yike. I'm That's there too. Don't blows. worry. I, don't, I was going to um, say, wow, wow. I should... <laughs> I'm gonna fight you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, so but does it my looks... 19 work? Yes, with a You've 19. Um... Is it going to 19? With Why does she have advantage? Yeah. She's, she's got um, the. I mean, I'm not questioning from Elena. Elena. She's oh, got... That was for Dex. It's not. That's, is that a. Um... Oh, for um, enhance ability? Um... I thought that was just saves, but. Yeah. Let me hmm? see. All oh. on dexterity checks. Yeah. Wow. It's, it's not right. even on saves. It's only on skills. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So, um, so, so yeah, Inaris, you have advantage skills. on this roll as you've um, the spell that Mariah cast on you makes me oh. you feel particularly limber. That's a twenty-five. And <laughs> I'm getting you in are this able window. to slide a thin wire. You found a hole. I'm pain. getting in this hole. And there are these sort of iron. Um, iron knobs that you can turn in two points to unlatch and then 
turn the window sort of vertically to create, excuse me, to create this sort of vent. Um, <laughs> Excuse me. And it's difficult to do, but you're able to um, snake the wire through at both points and pull them, turn them, and then with a, uh, you kind of hold your breath for a moment thinking this could be the loudest screech ever, but you give it just, just enough effort to break sort of the static force of it staying still and then get it moving and you stop at a place you it's just about to screech and grind to a slow halt you can hear it and then you just let it go and realize you've opened this window almost completely silently it's expertly done all right i am i'm going in okay so you, music plays you dip in to this place and there is silence within the home. Some A glowing light in the corner here, in the corner, and you see more glowing light from the grand uh, uh, great room where you know the uh, diverging ascending staircase is, the grand staircase. We've just been gifted 300 bits from MCR Music 3. Thank you very much. MCR. Music. That's a D6 inspiration. DM. Thank you very much. Thank you all very Thank much. Thank you very much. Um, that for those is great. Listening as well, that could be the start of a new hype train where we can give away even more store credits. So if you are interested in store credit for the crack and dice and uh, exclamation mark giveaway to enter. Is it you that's got the thing to roll or is it me? I do. I have it. Um, but I'm not gonna I don't know. It. I feel like the audience has been so generous and um, we appreciate you guys a lot. Um, I think since this is pretty much just an heiress alone in here, yeah, it makes that sense. we're going to give this D6 to an heiress because she's got a big job to pull off here. So um, sorry to those <laughs> of you on the boat, <laughs> but this one's going to an heiress. A D6 inspiration for you. Sweet. You have to draw you. Oh, all right. So I forget what room it's in, but Anaris remembers. You would know oh. that it is upstairs. And if you can see where my ping pulls right here, it is there. So towards the rear of the home, sort of the back right portion of the second floor. Awesome. Being the expert thievery person that I am, I am going to quietly close the window behind me. So if the guard comes back out of the room, he doesn't see a window open that was closed. That is a grand idea. And then I am stealthily booking it down this hallway. All right. Don't you dare bark again. Hmm? She told you not to One bark, Peter. Bark. Yeah, that's right. Bark. Everybody stop. <laughs> bark, bark. <laughs> so you know the stairs are over here, and as you book it down this hallway, um, you reveal over in this corner another set of windows and a dead end. You have not been down this way before, but that is all you see as you hear a door creak open and steps I'm going to go investigate the wall. Is there any secret passageways? Anything? Sure. Make an investigation check as the steps begin to grow louder behind you. So <laughs> While you're doing that, we've just had uh? Snake Spinner coming in with $10 for two D20 oh. inspirations. But what's up, Snake Spinner? It's been a while since I've seen you. Welcome. Thank you very much, Snake Spinner not wasting my inspiration on that terrible roll of a four okay so... nothing it's a regular bookcase not really with interesting books either like fake books and dumb platters and stuff just displayed regular wealth 
why why do they she's thinking this why do they do this this is a complete waste of money they should just give me their money and i will teach them the right way to do it by spending and who's that talking over there and i said she's not saying that out loud <laughs> can can uh, doll also make an investigation check uh sure i guess would this be me or would doll this is me me making an investigation check uh, I would say it would be difficult. You could do a perception check, but investigating through your familiar senses, investigation requires more manipulation of objects. Um, you it's, could do a perception. He's got a better roll. Yeah. He's got a better roll. Crack and die will give us a 14 on the die, 16 total. 16. Um uh, you take a look through Doll's eyes. It looks like a regular bookshelf to you as well. Okay. And Eris says this guard kind of makes his route around here. He walks right past you to look out this window. Um, you almost feel him brush past you as you hold yourself against the wall. Please make another stealth check with advantage. That's a 28. 28. <laughs> silent as silence can be, you pin up against the wall and are able to continue moving past him without even coming close to alerting him to your presence. Okay. Uh, she will go around. Can I go through here? What are these dotted lines? What are, what are they? Uh, nope. You can go through this regular this room here, and you see two guards at the bottom of the stairs here. I'm going to be very, very, very quiet. And is this a hallway? Right through here. Yes. Yeah, so basically, there is a landing above you on either side ah. that's what the dotted lines indicate that is where you can see up to the second story there is landing all the way around um you can see railings up to the second floor okay i am going to just stealthily quietly walk right past them and up the stairs okay with a 28 you are absolutely able to do that and in drow and her silent hand language she's just going to make some obscene gestures and keep on going I love it. That is most excellent. You see another one of these same. Um, now you can see the upper floor here. And you see the hallways which you would have recognized before. You know that the room that you are looking to go in is right over here. Down a narrow hallway on the top floor. There is a guard standing right in front of the door. All right. uh, where'd my token go? You can drag it back on wherever you'd like. Okay. Oh boy. And he's directly in front. Okay. That's correct. Spell, 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 spell. Nether, you can see this through Doll's eyes as well. I'm waiting to see what Anaris does. I have something. <laughs> oh, my God. oh shit! And that dead ends behind him. It does. There is a single small window looking out to the sort of back landing there. I am going to carefully and quietly. Where's my inventory? And I'm going to take one of my ball bearings. And I'm going to roll it down the hallway. And hopefully it will clink against the wall to get his attention. I just need him to walk past. So rolling it down the hallway this way yes away down here 
Okay, interesting. Make a sleight of hand check. Come on, come on, come on. I want to use my inspiration. <laughs> D6. It is a dexterity check, so advantage. you have advantage. Thanks to your friend Moriah. Thanks to the captain. Ooh, I had I faith. I've, I've seen you, Bull. Many. I had faith. Um, <laughs> So, and you roll this metal ball down the lane and it yes. you pick a really great place, a set of windows that sort of look from the second floor over into this library, which makes a um, loud clank. And it even goes just a bit harder than you think. And you, it's, you almost think you see a, almost a hairline fracture develop along the window. And, huh? Doll leaves um, uh, and... And ours his shoulder and immediately just flies down to grab it and stick it underneath his clothes. Okay. Um, the guard goes down here, goes down to a knee, and begins to inspect the window. I bolt down the hallway quietly. Quietly. Okay. Okay. And the door's here. That's correct. I am going to gently, you know that that what you do when you go downstairs to get a snack when your parents are sleeping and you don't want to wake them up, so you're just opening the refrigerator door really, really slowly. Yeah, she's doing that. Okay. Um, make a uh, make one more sleight of hand check, please. Can I get advantage? DM, on can I hold a spell in case this goes badly? <laughs> Um, oh, I believe by delivering it, your uh, sprite would become visible, though, correct? I got a, I got a 24, uh, we're good. I guess it depends. I mean, I one of us would become visible. I think it would uh, maybe be both. Um, maybe? Okay. All right, I would, well, I would say case, both. The new. Yeah, okay. Oh, another 24. So very skillfully you open this door and you can see staring out of the window standing right next to his desk is gallon prime water himself dark circles under his eyes you see him turn around and sit back down at the desk and start to piece through a couple other papers i'm going to slip in and then you hear uh shut the, the hell. hell and this guard starts to sort of start walking back i'm gonna shut the door all right it's almost with not a sound you shut the door and you hear the footfalls stop on the other side of it as and you also hear a slight creaking sound as you can hear this guard lean his weight against the door he is here to protect gellin prime water sighs takes a quill and starts writing in a journal you are in a room with him with one window, one door, no other obvious ways in or out. That is where we will pick up after our little break. We, we should <laughs> not make like... such threats. So if you are just hopping in with us, um, man, the long and short of it, I, I don't know. Um, the rogue has snuck into a building alone. Imagine that. Um, and her objective is stealing what seems to be a paperweight, but what the party knows to be a magical object that has some sort of connection to an ancient being beneath the ocean. Um, there's a Come cult on, that worships this being, and the recent actions of the cult and the being itself threaten Saltmarsh dearly. So they are trying to recover this artifact from the desk of the richest person in town, in order to get it to a wizard so he can properly determine what it is. So, Inaris, the door is closed behind you. You hear this guard lean back against the door and you see Gellin Primewater sitting at his desk, dark bags under his eyes, shoulders slumped, looking haggard, tired, and miserable as he moves this black obsidian obelisk um, a uh, paperweight off of a few papers and begins to continue writing. I am gonna creepy, 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 creep. 
Still Come on, bleeding. Linares, you, you know you want to burn this place down. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea how bad I want to set this place on fire. <clears throat> oh, yes. Hashtag rogue. So rogue. Um, oh, but, 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 but the, what's his name? Victor. What, what's his name? Oh, what's his oh name? Okay. what's his name? Victor. Victor Who's and Claire Victor? forever. Uh, no. <laughs> oh, but where's oh, Amazing. Otto? If we're For those of you who didn't know, the paladin and Curse of Strahd found a little wizard in the attic who immediately fell in love with her. Thus ensued, um, you oh know, and much the hilarity. Rogue, and, the rogue and then they burned, burned the down. house down. Yeah. So. And she did not exactly, uh, she had no interest in him or anything My remotely resembling elsewhere. him. His, Tales uh, all this time? <laughs> It was great times. Uh, you can watch if you if anyone wants to watch those. We have all of that up on YouTube. Um, if you go to our YouTube channel, um, all of Curse of the Curse of Strahd game that a lot of this group played is is there. So very good. So that is what you see in Eris. Um, excuse me if you asked something before I got distracted. <laughs> Forgive me. It is Here you right. are. But he does not seem aware of your presence. Okay. Um, which way is he looking? Um, so it's going to look like he's sitting on top of his desk, but <laughs> his desk is a bit further into the room and he is sitting behind it with his back up against the wall. Okay. So is it? Is, okay. So he's facing. Facing this way. You. You this are. Or this way. This way. He is. He is. His back is to the wall that he is nearest, and he is facing the room. There. Correct. He is looking right at you from there. Okay. On his desk, where is the paperweight? Um, it's about maybe fourteen inches from him to his uh to his left hand side he is he has just taken it off of the desk and pulled it closer into the left side of him to take it off of a few papers okay so i'm gonna walk around to the side of the desk <laughs> where it is now <laughs> Regarding invisibility, if I pull anything out of my pocket, is it visible? As um, if you drop it, yes. Good to know. Uh, what else is in the room, DM? Anything that could be knocked over or moved that would potentially create a distraction? Um, for him so to yeah, it? it's there is a round table. Um, sort of a meeting table where he met you earlier. There are a number of things on his desk. There is um, sort of an oversized brass compass and sextant. There is a whole shelf on the opposite wall containing um, various knickknacks, expensive vases, um, a framed map on the wall. It is a luxurious study of a nautical merchant so um if you can imagine it in that it is probably there doll would like to um knock the painting off the wall in such a way as it, it looks as if uh the hook on the painting just gave out and the painting fell as paintings are sometimes wont to do okay so the painting probably weighs upwards of about 10 pounds right if it's a full framed painting, is how is Doll able to do that? Manipulate that much weight? Doll pulls out a very tiny wire cutter, long sword, long sword, and goes and starts to cut the twine or whatever is holding the painting up. Okay, yeah, there's a a little bit of twine. So he goes. You can uh, have. Have Doll make a sleight of hand check. Okay, Doll. May he do it at advantage? No, I guess not. Can I give him my inspiration? Do you have inspiration? Inspiration? Did I use? Did I lose it? Did I use it? The already? two. Uh, okay. We'll okay. just go ahead and continue with this. This will be the last of it. But uh, generosity continues. The two of you have D twenty inspiration to use. Oh, all right. Well, yes, he will use D twenty inspiration on this sleight of hand check. With thanks to Snake Spitter. 
double 18s. So that's going to be um, a total of 22. More than enough in his state. And he doesn't hear the sawing or anything. And then suddenly, Inaris, behind you, you hear a crashing sound. The door swings open and one of the guards steps in. Everything all right? And uh, Prime Water jumps to his feet. The chair crashes against the wall behind him. And he looks about and starts to look and gets up and starts to look towards the painting. You hear heavy footsteps against um, the floor as the pair of guards from below also rush into the room. I make the switch, I make the switch, I make the switch. Make a sleight of hand check, please. <laughs> Use the uh, use the inspiration. Use the inspiration. Oh, she's, got, she's, got she's got a advantage. She's got a advantage. Slide of hand. Oh, already has it anyway. Right. And she's got a d6 if she needs it. Do I have a d6? Do I have my d6? Right. Yep. You do. Go 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 go. What a time to not roll well. It's a 16. <laughs> you got man. above a 15. <laughs> oh, God. So fortunate. <laughs> oh, As God. all is quiet for a moment, and Prime Water looks around the room. <laughs> and he just kind of hangs his head and motions to the guards to be on their way and says. Steve. Lock up the study. I'm going to sleep. And um, sort of shuffles some of his papers into a pile and covers them. Um, he's got sort of a folio, a leather folio, that he covers up some of these letters with and just leaves them there for the next morning. Just covers them on the desk. And then... Jesus. starts to walk out he then moves the paperweight back to the center of the desk and stops for a moment and <gasps> looks at it and it's fine <sighs> lets out a yawn and puts it back down and then exits the room one of the guards stays in the room while he goes to the room up here to the north and they resume their positions. Is the door open? Did they leave the door open? Because that, that's a natural thing to do. They do not. <laughs> okay. 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 It's okay. It's okay. We can do this. We can do this. I am... You have made the switch, by the way, Anaris. <laughs> and you hear whispers in your head. What do they and say? And you even hear a sound. Feather. Black feather. Oh, you sir. Who do you serve? The Raven Queen? <laughs> Avian Strumpet, usurper. Pathetic. You will not make it out of here. You will not survive this. You will not make it out of here. You will not survive this. Submit, 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 submit. And the whispers just go on in the back of your head endlessly. I've heard worse than it in my mind. She's not talking out loud. She's not stupid. I've heard worse than that from my mother. I'm not scared of you. And I'm going to go up and... Oh, I don't want to touch the window because you're still in here. Okay, 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 okay. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. Ball bearing in hand. 
and I'm going to come up to the door and I'm going to try to roll it under the door. And I roll it under the door. Uh, no, the door is too flush with the with the um, floor. It is a well constructed house that would be drafty AF to have enough space for a ball bearing to roll. Underneath. <laughs> Prime Waters house is nicer than that. Uh, okay, freaking rich people. Okay. Um, I guess I'm going out the window because if I cast any spell, I become visible. Yep. Yep. How tall is the guard? Average height, about 5'10". What's his build? What do we think he weighs? Um, let's, I mean, he, he is armored, but let's say about probably close to 200 pounds. What's my strength? <laughs> what are you thinking? Is what I want to know. <laughs> Save your face. <laughs> uh, not high enough for that. But Pixie says I... the bitch is too fancy for a draft. Everyone's hating on Gellin Prime Water. I don't get it. It's. <laughs> I was what happens when you have obelisks on your desk. Obvi. I'm gonna know? take my. Tinder box out. I want to. I, no, I know exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pour a little bit of oil on the floor, and I'm gonna light it on fire. Hang so on. I'm not even joking. I pour a small <laughs> amount of oil on the floor, away <laughs> from the door, opposite side of the room. When they open the door to come in, I'm going to run out. All right. I, um, as Nether sees this starting to happen. Her eyes downstairs widen and um, Doll flies around to right behind the guard that's in this room um, and I'm going to cast Phantasmal Force on him using um, the uh, uh, familiar as a as the caster. You are doing it to who? The guard that is in this room. Okay, what is the guard going to see then? The guard is going to see uh, the window fly open um, and a um, sort of a bizarre sea-like creature, kind of like a, um, a manta ray, just sort of floating right there outside the window. And it's going to look and just sort of lift up and the maw is going to go... <laughs> Okay. <laughs> a couple things happen. A you hear a shattering sound and then a um the guard steps forward closer into the room and looks and then all of a sudden he um uh uh points towards this the the um pool spreading on on the ground and then it ignites and suddenly he says f f f f f f Fuck! And as he looks up at the window and suddenly sees this thing coming up at him and just erupts into an absolute panic. You hear um, the stomping of footsteps as a number of these guards all come up to the room. They move forward and start to um, remove their cloaks and start batting at the fire. Is the window still um, open? The window is not open. Only the, the window one. is not open. He made the illusion of the window opening. Right. And Eris, you are backed up against the wall, and the middle of this room is now beginning, is on fire and beginning to spread. Okay, I'm going to run this way. I'm going to run onto the desk. I am going to grab the papers and sort of throw them. And then I'm going to jump off Doll's the desk. Doll's going to catch the papers. But <laughs> you. <laughs> So they think it's a ghost. Daenerys, hockey? please make an acrobatics check. <laughs> uh, you got this. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. I can do this. I can do this. I can. Oh, that's a nineteen. Roll again. You have advantage, just in case. Yes. You never know. Just in case. I'm gonna flip. I'm gonna do a flip. Just in case. Yeah, okay. 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 Okay.
You're, yeah, you're no not going to quite do a flip. You can do a little twist, though. Fine. As you <laughs> jump over the top of this guard, you are able to get over top of him. And in the chaos of um, the rest of them, Talise, the ones you were distracting outside, suddenly about face and run in as the as the um, emergency is raised for the fire breaking out. They all run into the house and begin um, tending to this emergency. Inaris. You are able to get out with that acrobatics check. No, no one hears you with what's going on. The last thing you see is Gellin Primewater opening the door here and looking out around the side. Um, his eyes wide with confusion, a slight bit of panic. You will be able to exit the house without problem with this distraction created. Um, Doll, please roll a um, d100. There are some mundane things and some not mundane things. I will outright tell you if you roll a... Um, a there's a 33% um, chance that you are going to get something that's going to be relevant to you. So is a 33 a or lower chance. and the perfect... random um, paper that you grab might <laughs> pertain the to what you're doing. paper is a 27 27 <laughs> okay something you might want to look at then you got lucky yes i sure did <laughs> you're welcome for me throwing them up in the air for you oh well, <laughs> thank you <laughs> it would have been a lot easier to look at just in the in the folder but sure <laughs> a flawless operation that always pretty... ends in a house fire. As is, soon as that, as, that's the sentence. That's the only thing I could think of. That is the only thing I could think of was to set so, something on fire. In all the distraction, I'm hoping that Dahl had enough time to recast invisibility on himself. Um. Yes. Hmm. Which is which is interesting. Um. In that he would have been visible for well that's why i said seconds. he went around behind the guard that was in the room before okay. he cast the spell that's uh that is fine it's innate ability mm -hmm. so we'll we'll go with that and you are all able to escape and make your way back to the ship those of you on the ship it's a little boring for a while <laughs> until suddenly you hear Talise shouting. I totally would have entertained them, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> well. Ain't no party without the rogue. You do hear, as I said, you do hear Talise shouting. And then you think, oh God, what's going on? Was that her sermon? <laughs> yes. Oh, that's been amazing. <laughs> then that stops. And then <laughs> you hear a ding, 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 ding kind of ringing bell sound and the balcony that prime water typically shouts out of suddenly you see it glowing brighter and brighter not just a gas lamp but a fire erupting the window shatters out and you see flames licking up the side of the building and you see this a group dozen, has a two dozen panicked guards begin to converge upon the location, Our trying to put out this fire that has now been set in the Prime Water Mansion. Arson is our brand. It's about that time that you hear a thump, 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 stomping sound, charging up the gangplank, and the invisibilities drop, and you see Inaris there. You see Nether there successful in their heist we, we got it we got it it's in my bag my i don't know i don't know i don't know about that i'm just gonna kind of mosey just casually right. well, wander back uh, in oh i'm gonna go take a nap and <laughs> i get back right, wait, no, okay ship. hold on what are we what are we doing with with the paperweight what are we doing with the paperweight um i'll take care of it i'll take care of it and i will get onto the ship and head straight for my room. Oh no, I thought we had to get it to, I thought we had to, no, no I, grab, I grab her. I thought we had to get it to the dude, like ASAP. To the who? The, the, the fucking wizard. 
Remember, Nene, we were going to go give it back to that really tall guy in the funny hat? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I just needed something in my room. I'll be right back. Nene. I'll be right back. Give me five minutes. Nene. Five minutes, four minutes, four minutes. And I... Amazing. <laughs> Can I yeah. make an insight check? Yeah, likewise. You may. <laughs> um... Thank you, Dwarf. Good to have you here, by the way, while you're while you're rolling that, uh, David. And um, oh, holy thank God. you, buddy. Oh, Good oh, to have you here. Um, oh, Snake Spinner. There's so many. Alias Prime, thank you. And Snake Spinner just unleashing the Kraken. Thank you, all of you together, for those five gifted subs. That is so generous. Thank you, Snake Spinner. Thank you, Dwarf, again for another 300 bits. You guys are absolutely ridiculous we love you thank you you have unleashed the kraken we've got a what we've got a level some the hype drain is going crazy kraken doesn't even know what to do so um i do love the kraken though we are absolutely overwhelmed level by two this. complete all right level two that is ten dollars thank half, you guys halfway through oh, my level oh, three. Oh, oh my god can oh. we oh. Pixie. Is also what i rolled for my insight it comes pixie. But, um, I got two what is it that you rolled? Ten total. I... Oh, I got a six on the die. She's just being drow. That's... I got a thirty <laughs> twenty on insight. Yeah, I need to roll mine. I I got too excited. I got distracted by the hype. Oh, Level three, three hype ranger. Train. Thank Complete. you, Alias Prime. Thank you. All right, you guys are being ridiculous. <laughs> you so guys good. are. You guys are. You guys are buying into the hype, which is good. I just don't want me to put this thing down. <laughs> Because no, the Kraken hype gives that, back to you. <laughs> um, um, DM, I just rolled a 23 insight. All right. So we've got some high insights here. So, Inaris, would down. you care to communicate what they would have seen in you as you duck away to that moment? What is your emotional state? She's up to something. Okay. <laughs> She's up to something, guys. Uh, <laughs> Did I need to roll? <laughs> she doesn't just have to go to the bathroom quick. She's doing something. She's uh, she's up to something. You don't know what though. I mean, she could be going to the bathroom. She Definitely yeah, not going to the bathroom. At least she's doing something attempts. else while she's going to the bathroom. If that's what she's doing, so <laughs> she's yeah, well, she's up to, uh, she's up to I'm, something. I'm definitely gonna follow her. Nene, Nene, concerned friend. So unless you stop her, God. she no. You just go. no. I I did grab you, but then I ran away again. Are you still yeah. holding the whole, on to me the whole time? Let's get that people haven't stopped. Let's just start 100 bits, 100 to... bits. Snake Spin is just coming with 1,500. Dwarf is coming with another 200. Good lord. Can I put it down I get yet? I so distracted. This is amazing. No. Ruin, do the tentacle dance. <laughs> Level 4 complete. That's $25. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, Liz, dance. One more, <laughs> one more level. One more level to go for fifty dollars giveaway. Bless you. <laughs> Thank you, Liz. It's <laughs> getting heavy. Uh, did Mariah have a hold of me the whole time? I I said that I tried to grab at you. Like I, dude, we need to like book it the fuck over there like right now. Just give me a minute. I Are just okay? need a minute. This is weird. Just a minute, and then we'll go. Oh, I got everything that we needed. Oh, it's heavy. Uh, sh shit, Tully's come with me. Just, just come here. Come okay. Um, bear back, guys. Snake's right. is just coming so, with another Tully's... five gifted subs. That's crazy. <laughs> so maybe. So, Talise, you come, um... Into the ship at uh, the uh, oh, yes. quarters as Anaris is sitting there. Um, Anaris, you are sitting there with this obelisk, which on the whole way on the, your exit, it's been whispering to you um, things that are a bit upsetting about your deity, things that you would have considered even a secret of your order, um, things about the Raven Queen that are disturbing. Um, distracting, even. Even to you. I, I and Talise, you come into the room and see an heiress here, sitting with this black 
stone obelisk. So... What even is this, exactly? I don't know exactly. Um... Not He's... good? No, it's insulting the Raven Queen. Well, why are you listening? You don't listen to anyone when they insult the Raven Queen. Why would you listen to a stone? Because it's in the back of my head. Well... Hmm. Well, didn't... Didn't someone have this issue before? The last time that we interacted with one of these? That they, like, got in there and it kind of just, like, wormed its way in with little creepy tentacles? Probably. Yeah. <clears throat> and I mean, Fuck's you sake. know the Raven Queen is amazing. She gets you in and out of so many problems. And she even helps me, and I don't really, like, believe in her exactly. So I wouldn't... You can't like, not believe in her. Oh, uh, you know what I mean. I mean, <sighs> you know what I mean. It's weird. Valkor, but also Raven Queen, but Valkor. Um, <laughs> no. So, like, like, what's some, like, what's going on? Like, what's some of the stuff? Tell me what it's saying, and I'll tell you the truth. It just, it, 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 it knows things. It said I wasn't going to get out if they're alive, but obviously it was wrong because I did. Yeah. Okay, so right there wrong so why would we listen to that and i was outside so if you've needed real help you would have used our special emergency call which your friend's it. deity is even younger than yours just a stupid human uh, sailed on a ship was wealthy gained power took power took space in the ether and now gives it and pretends it's generous an upstart a thief just a privateer given a chair at a higher table you okay uh you got, you got that weird look on your face like you drank some of that weird crab wine like, it, 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 no, it's, 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 uh, in, insulting your, your, Valcor. We should probably get rid of this. That's the plan. Do you need me to hold it for a while? No. That's okay. I've got it. Are and you sure? She'll put it back in her bag. I've got it. It's fine. Let's, let's, let's just go. Well, Tell me if it gets worse. Like, you don't have to tell anybody else, but let me know. Okay? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean it. Don't do that stupid thing that you always do. Tell me if it's worse. I do a lot of stupid things. What stupid thing are you talking about? You do about? many stupid things, and one of those is hiding things from me when I'm your partner. So if you could just, you know, be open with me, that would be great. Okay, well, we should we should go before before Mariah get, gets pissed at me. I told her four minutes, and it's it's been like four and a half. Oh my god, who gives a shit? It's fine. <laughs> She's not going anywhere. We're on a ship. And she knows I'm not going anywhere because I'm the quartermaster. It's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> we, can't, we can't go anywhere on a ship. <laughs> Isn't that the you whole know what I mean? <laughs> You've got me all kind of wound up because it's really weird that you keep something from me. So I'm not going to push you on it, but don't stress about things right now. We'll figure it out and we're getting rid of this thing anyway. That's the whole point. Yeah, I, we should. I think I accidentally set that room on fire too. When you say accidentally, do you mean accidentally on purpose? Accidentally? Yeah. I, I panicked, okay? It happens. Hey, whatever you got out, I don't care. And if it had gotten really bad, I would have helped. Not burn things down. I would have helped clean things up with water. It's, you know, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Okay. I, yeah. I don't, for, for the record, I don't, I don't think your, your deity's an upstart, so. Thank you. 
Um, DM, is the house still on fire? Um, a bit. <laughs> a, a, a little. A little bit. Maybe. I'm gonna. Uh. Uh. Well, I don't. I don't really have a whole lot I can do about that. But maybe we should try to help them. Looking I mean, about, um, it looks like there are dozens of people surrounding the home. Others climbing it. It seems there's a bucket brigade that's been formed. Um, okay. It will probably be all right. There will be significant damage to the um, study, but it looks like they have it mostly contained um, from what you guys can see from your vantage point right now. And as Ineris and Talese come out, um, Sarayan, you hear this sound in the back of your head as soon as Ineris leaves the tavern that says... Tavern? Ever? Boat? Or the, the tavern, tavern, sorry. I don't know what I'm thinking of. <laughs> Where am I? We've <laughs> um, all been drinking that crap. That's, we, we could have named the ship that, wall, and that wouldn't have made line. anything confusing at all. Right. <laughs> that, would, that would be something, right? Um, but no, Sarayan, you do hear a voice that just sort of tickles the back of your mind that says, um, Servant of Persona. How many of your companions knew that name before you came? And since she hears it in her mind, she can't quite decide whether or not to answer out loud or to just answer in her mind. And so she just tries answering in her mind, but she answers, what, persona? Also, what? Who are you? Wait, how are you talking to me? Prank caller. <laughs> Hang up. <laughs> Reject They do not know uh, no, because no. Persona is weak. <gasps> he is a tradition. Nothing more. That's Listen incredible. to me. I don't seem to have a choice. <laughs> right you are. I was here before and will be after Persona disintegrates into memories of tapestry, engravings, and broken symbols upon your crumbled kingdom below. Well, the, the, the Triton are very strong. I'm not super worried about us going anywhere anytime soon. You have not faced strength. What is strength, if not persona? I am strength. I am cunning. I have outlasted them all. I remember persona when persona was a whim in the minds of your people. And persona will be forgotten by them soon enough. Persona is a trend, you foolish child. Then who are you? I will remain. So that weird. didn't answer my question. Well, isn't it possible that both you and Persona could exist concurrently with one another? I mean, are you not, are you mutually exclusive? I, I don't understand. We exist concurrently. Oh, presently. okay. Well, then, great. So, Persona, I mean, I don't understand why you, you're you upset. Multiple gods can exist. Why are I you am rising, and Persona shall sink and decay in the depths of the sea, eaten by the crabs, by the krill. And the smallest of beings, Persona, shall decay to nothing. Mm, well, I, I, I think only time can tell, you know. So, but you do not have that time, Ancient One. Ancient One, me? Oh my gosh, 
from 17. <laughs> Your people are ancient. Oh, you meant as like I a, doubt you a shall mo- grow to such things. Your notebook will be unfinished. You will not know love, and you will not complete your pilgrimage. Good luck. And the voice... <laughs> The voice just keeps muttering these things in the back of your head. Wow, what a downer. <laughs> Screw <laughs> that guy. My inner monologue's a dick. <laughs> yeah. He sucks. Oh, is there Lord. any outward indication that Saran's having like a like a low key like existential crisis conversation in her? I variety? think she's probably making. Oh, literally, what I'm imagining is her being like. <laughs> <laughs> like have you so seen the Brady like, Bunch movie so she looks it's like Jan that. when she like talks herself out of things I... <laughs> <laughs> she's like she's like enacting a viral um, TikTok video but uh, in real life oh yeah she's like <laughs> at, <laughs> some <laughs> point... <laughs> at some exactly. point seeing Sarayan making strange faces inexplicably and like giving it a moment just to see if it's a Saran thing or if I think it's like, like actually maybe a problem. <laughs> but just kind of go over there as as Nene and, and and them are getting themselves together. Nene and them. Uh, sorry, I'm tired brain man. Um, Papper on the Please? shoulder. Um, oh, Saran. Um, mm, mm, mm-hmm. You okay, kid? Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I just had um I just had a really interesting moment in time. Okay. Well, um if uh, you want to talk about it, just tell me, I guess. Maybe. Okay. Um yeah. Okay. Um so I've gotten the impression before that I may have alienated myself from from the group a little bit. Um, And I'm just, I'm really just trying to find my feet. uh, And I feel like I am kind of making a a big mess of things. Um, And so if I ever was rude to you, I'm sorry. Uh, It wasn't intentional. I know that sometimes I can just say things and I, it's usually, I, I'm learning and I'm trying to be better. Um, all that being said, have you ever had a conversation, uh, with something in your brain that was not your voice, but it was like telling you things, but like, you knew it wasn't you. It's not like the conversations that I like make up about me talking to someone that we've never met. Um, maybe about how I think they're cute. No, it's not like that. It's not like when you like play through a scenario. It's more like when, does that, does this make sense? I. Yes. Um, DM, <laughs> did Talise hear this? Um, so I, um, I, I d- gave myself a, a personal, how on top of this shit am I roll? And I rolled fairly high. So. Um... That's fine. <laughs> this, so I, I will assume that some of you could have heard this probably both Nether and Talise heard this, but um, you notice that at the moment um, it looks like Sarayan and um, Mariah are sort of off by themselves at the moment. This isn't exactly something that's being declared publicly, so something you've heard yes, but... Melvin has already told us about the other thing trying to speak to him and contact him, hasn't he? Yeah. um, Right. So so experienced it. my point so for the rest just... let's we can let mariah and um and Saran finish this but the rest of you maybe get wind of this at least and are aware of the entity here so yeah mm-hmm. um and just to be clear us... like i haven't had this sort of thing happen before it, 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 it was like somebody was talking to me and they were physically here but they were not physically here Okay. Um, they and, said some and, really rude things. Very rude. Yeah. Um, well, considering the fact that you haven't imbibed any alcohol this evening, and you, no. as far as I'm aware, you're not under the ill effects of 
other illicit substances. No. So I'm straight um, edge. <laughs> right you are. Um I'm I'm kind of inclined to say that it's because we're in the vicinity of a um a horribly evil eldritch object. Oh, um, the, oh, 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 the paperweight. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Nate, Nate, Nate got it. And shit. Got it back. Yeah. Sorry, she kind of scares me, so I, I mostly just Nate, Nate does. Yeah, and also to least, she also yeah. scares me. I feel like nobody likes me. Oh, I'm, I, no. Well, no, no one likes me. No, no. Oh God, words. Um, oh, sorry. Um, because I know it can be difficult. I wasn't the most popular fish in school. I mean, I know that can be hard to deal with. Uh, let me put it to you this way. Huh? Um, you're very different than a lot of the people that are here. Okay. That's not a bad thing. Okay. Like, just about finding the way that you're different, you know, works with other people's different, you know? Sure. Like, yeah. I'd, I'd be totally honest, you totally rubbed me the wrong way the first couple of days that we were working together. That's fair. I didn't like you either. Yeah. Great. Glad we're on the same page. Um, but, but now I do. If you, if you want to, I don't know. I'm sorry. I. It's okay. Um, no, it's fine. I, uh, I'm, I'm having some, I'm, I'm kind of going through some issues here. Okay. There's a lot in this current sort of situation. That's making me very uncomfortable. Because of the, to... the rock. No, no oh. more in that. I feel Separate like from the rock. Think about it like a metaphorical rock. Yeah, have you ever heard, heard the phrase like you know, caught between like rock and hard place? I've seen fish get caught between a rock and a hard place at the bottom of the ocean. Great, literal so. example. That's what I feel like. Okay, so oh, you're like the fish. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So, okay, that that's how we're gonna run with this. Yeah. So, yeah. um. So you're the fish. Yes, I'm the fish, okay. and. Um, the rocks are, um, social pressures, um, coming from multiple directions and okay. portions of my life right now, oh. and they don't really gel sure. and it's very uncomfortable. I understand. And I don't gel anywhere. Wasn't sure if you're trying to be literal there, but, um, uh, both. Okay. Um, so, um, please find a private place if you need to gel. <laughs> That's private. Oh. That's between you and your anyway. guy. Persona. Um, point being that I'm trying to gel, to chill, to chill. Yeah. Oh, did you say and to chill to and go not to with gel? the flow? I like like the currents. Yes, following the I currents do know and about to swim currents. against them. I used to get in trouble for literally swimming against the current. Really? Yeah. I just thought the teacher was stupid. That doesn't surprise me. Um, you know what? I. We still have the floating issue of um, eldritch obelisk um, influencing people's right, brains, right, right. apparently. Oh, right, so, but that's what um, we were talking about. How yeah. about we um, put a pin in this, and you and I can chat more about this later. A I'm going to drink pin. some wine, and you don't have to, but I'm going to offer you some <sighs> anyway, okay? Uh, mm, uh, yeah. And she begins looking around for the nearest possible wine receptacle. <laughs> I, I imagine she finds something gang. that is totally, <laughs> totally unfitting for it. So like... <laughs> having, having maybe heard some of this, um, uh, you guys see <laughs> um, 
first of all, Mariah turning around and booking it back towards the group, going to a crate. Without even looking, she pops the crate open, grabs a ball, pulls out the cork, and just takes a long, hard swig of wine. Meanwhile, Serene is starting to go towards various barrels and looking open. Oh, that's apples. <laughs> oh, there's grain in there. Oh, and it's just kind of tank. looking in various... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, and finally, Serene, you do see... Oh, there's the crate of wine bottles. Oh, wow. Do I open it with my hand? Wait, ah. With practice. Don't break your teeth. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, ah, okay. It's possible. She bombs her face with so the who wine else, bottle. I gesture with the bottle. Who else is hearing weird shit in their brains? I think it's time to get this thing you, off you? of the boat. Yep, great. Let's go. Yes. So it sounds like we're moving towards delivering the obelisk. Yes. Aye, aye. Right away, yes, please. Thank you. It is the middle of the night, but it is totally possible to do this as um, the surf sort of pounds on the side of Salt Marsh. You guys depart once more. Um, a couple second glances given to you as you go up the prime water docks because of exactly what's going on. There's quite a lot of activity, but that almost masks your departure. And it's not hard at all for you to get out unquestioned to um, the edge of town. Um, you are totally able to get towards uh, out all the way towards Keledex Tower. But before we do that, I just want to take a moment to highlight um, the generosity of all of you out there watching. Our beautiful, wonderful, favorite, best community ever. No hyperbole I could ever come up with could uh, match how you guys are because we're so lucky. Um, just a little bit on the, we, we hit a level five hype train, which means one of you is going to get a really amazing crack and dice gift card. So if you haven't done already, please do exclamation mark giveaway in the chat because that's going to be at the end of the stream coming up here in just a few minutes. Um, please enter in the giveaway because any of you, even if you, even if you just pull up the stream and just listen, just hang out for a bit, drop in, you help us. So thank you. It doesn't matter. You know, nothing matters. If you just, just come by and watch, say hello. We love you for doing so. Um, we hope you enjoy the content that we, um, put out. Um, we're so lucky to have a communicate, uh, Excuse me. We're so lucky to have a community like you. Just a couple highlights in that realm. Snake Spinner, 1,500 bits. Incredible. Dwarf, 1,300 bits. Absolute legend. Alias Prime, 400 bits. I hear you, buddy. You're amazing. Um, an on Lone Ranger for 200 bits. Thank you so much. That's awesome. The Bat Pope. What an awesome name. 100 bits, thank you. MCR Music, an old friend of the stream, constant ally to us. Thank you, my friend, for 100 bits. And Pingu Boy, love you, bud. 100 bits, thank you so much. And Snake Spinner, a stupid amount of subs, like maybe 10, just absolute mega sub donor. Thank you so much. Pixie, I mean, brought the fury as the ship is named. Uh, four subs, maybe more. You are an absolute legend and we're so blessed to have you as um uh one of our nearest and dearest friends so thank you all you guys are too generous the overlay that you're seeing even in some cases the mics in front of people's faces um you know there's even art stuff that we can't really say right now but is forthcoming these are all things that are coming soon um we we have new things to bring to you because of your support you guys are absolutely amazing and we put all of this support back into the stream so we can do better for you so thank you for trusting us with that we do what we can to make it worth your while thank you all for the level five hype train we're gonna give away a big ass dice gift card in a few minutes here so that's that thank you guys and we will one um, more one more little thing What's this up? Is, this What's is up, more. For, this is more for Chelsea, and for uh, the community as a whole. We're looking 
for a name to call our community. So start thinking of names and if you come up with something that's cool, send Chow a message on Discord. Stake out. I like dice goblins, but there we go. They're gonna be called the stakeouts. <laughs> Snake out. Snakes are our group name. Um, the snakes. No, that would be the, the uh, name C for the followers name for of the Waffles community. The community, yes. No, I know. I was kidding. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was a joke. It's it's okay. Sometimes I say things and they're not it's entirely serious. <laughs> what? Awesome. I don't believe what? that. <laughs> you guys are awesome. So, um, heading back towards the tower, you will see a light, a light in the um, top part of the tower. Kaladek is clearly up, and you will hear a sort of crackling energy um, along with some arcane words that sort of echo across the, um, the air as the protective magic surrounding the tower is dispelled, and you can see clearly what look to be stone paving blocks leading the way to the door. Kaladek seems informed of your arrival and as this energy and this 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 magical energy reverberates through the air at the same time the sh little shacks around the edge of town you hear doors being barred you hear windows shutting and being shuttered but the door is open to you and as you approach Kaladek's tower he is waiting for you at the bottom of the stairs his all nine, about almost nine feet of him waiting there for you, as he says. Have you brought it? Uh, part one of two here. We thought that you might be able to better protect it than us, especially against, you know, magical sight. And the voices. Be careful of the voices. Yeah, there's voices. He turns and are you still carrying it in, Eris? Yes. Please make a wisdom saving throw. Oh, no. Shit. We should have passed that shit off like the one ring. Oh, you can do... Now you could use your... Toss it um, into the fire. Your, your, uh, your inspiration. inspiration. In, oh, in, yes. Because the D6 I've already used. No, the, the D20. You had a 20. Talking yeah, about inspirations. Peter, are we giving... Are we doing uh, inspirations for all the bits Betty. that we received? Shit. <sighs> You know, it was n nearly we enough got, eight inspirations. We got so much. Part of me thinks that we should start next session, everyone having inspiration. Okay, sounds good. And it'll be that difficult. Just kidding. No, it's uh, <laughs> truly. Um, I think that's the best way to do it. However, Chael, if you are particularly worried about this one you may use inspiration based it, on she already had, our community she being did. ridiculous. The highest would be a 15 then based on that. Do we think if, I'm saying? If your modifier is correct. Ah. Yeah. 15 is what I'm hearing? Yeah. All right, 15 succeeds. You feel <gasps> your very essence being pulled into this. You feel tired. You ache, your knees, your elbows, even the joints of your fingers cry out to you in pain and protest as you hand over this obelisk. And as he takes this heavy lead blanket and wraps it around and takes it from you, suddenly you relax and oh, breathe a sigh of relief. And some of the energy of your soul begins to return to you. Yeah. Okay. Feeling so right the rest, there? the creature, you will bring it to me? As soon as we find one, yes. Yeah. You know it's, it's been like, like less than a day, right? I was yeah. optimistic. Slow your roll. <sighs> Okay. You remember what I said, right? You said a lot. Which part? Do you know when the, the Prime Water family moved here? 
This I found oh, up there. The Chandler, they married the Chandlers. The Chandlers. Yeah, that we should yeah. check out their dead. That's what I was thinking earlier, yes. And, well, you should do it. I'm not going to tell you what I think because, well, it's a long shot. If you come to the same conclusion I do, I... based on what I've seen, you don't want to create then maybe there's truth to okay. it. But I am, I've been grasping at straws for too long about this league. And I don't want to sully your inquiries with my bias. I cut, I do buy that. Okay, great. Well, we'll go check that out. Um, and hopefully we'll have a octopus priest specimen for you in short order. So just so I can set my expectations, should I be waiting a week, a I day, don't... a month? Is he really asking us to hurry up? Well, I feel like it'll definitely take more than a day. But since we have no idea what we're working with here, it's kind of hard to say. So maybe after we check out the whole Chandler business, we can get back to you and let you know what we think the projection is from there, since that'll probably give us a little more information to work with. That's very wishy-washy, but I'll take it. Thank you. I mean, we don't have You're not the first else. person who told me that. Thank you. Okay, bye. Um, actually, <laughs> Talisa, it looked, seemed like you had a question. Well, I was... I was just wondering, and maybe it's just me. Uh, you said you've been doing this grasping at straws for a long time. How long would you say is a long time? Better part of 20 years. I absolutely did not hear that because Siri tried to help you answer. <laughs> I'm an Android user. Can't you tell? Better part of 20 years. Um, can, can I ask one other question? Um, it seems like people around here don't like you. People were like slamming their windows as we walked by and coming up to your, your tower. Do you know what that's about? Oh, right. That's probably going to spread. You know my name, right? The, the full what they call me. No, uh, you're going to tell us. Nether so and Mariah would have heard the, f the full phrase, Keledek the Unspoken. Well, actually, probably would not have heard it many times. But if you're from here, maybe even Prion, you would have heard that mentioned. Um, it's like a Voldemort situation. You don't say his name. They seem to think that by saying my name or acknowledging me that I can listen in on their conversations. Can you? Uh, can you? I... Of course not. It's the imp. And then an imp appears yeah. upon his shoulder. It's just him listening. Oh, that makes much more sense. Cool. Wouldn't that be amazing, though? Just by it speaking would. your name, you can listen in on them? Well, I mean, it seems like you can do that without them speaking your name, mm -hmm. so it's kind of a moot point. That's a fair point. It's funny what people will do when they're afraid. Also a good point. So are we going to start, like, having people coming after us because, like, ooh, you went and hung out with Keladek, ooh. More like they might not invite you inside. Well, it's a good thing we have our own place to sleep. Their houses probably suck anyway. It's mm. good, too. Nice ship you have there. Well built. Thank you. Nice that you removed the whole slave quarters kind of thing. That was a good move. Distasteful. I think so. So shall we step two, crew? Sure, Captain. Hi. Sure. Nods. Yeah, that sounds fine. Enthusiastically. <laughs> Hot shit. Let's go. Great. Good. Goodbye. I need to buy the door. <laughs>
I look like, back to him what? as we go out. I say, don't spy on me. Mm-hmm. And I won't spy okay, on Okay, I'll stop. <laughs> Bye. Spies on me, he's going to get an eyeful, so go for it. I don't know if that's encouragement or discouragement. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, oh boy! And you're welcome to continue. Um, though, having delivered that to him, the investigation of the Chandler family is kind of the next step, and is kind of an entity unto itself, and so. I know you've only been here for a little bit, but friends, I think maybe this is a good place to start wrapping up tonight's session. Unless there are big things all of you want to take care of. Um, A night's sleep, recover some spell slots, and be ready for another, and be ready for a big investigation tomorrow. Or I wouldn't mind looking at the paper I stole. Sure, yeah. Um, we'll assume you all get back to Pixie's Fury and mm-hmm. the paper you stole will be written by Gellin Primewater. It will be a letter. You will be about halfway through penning it that will um, speak of um, it will say something as if um, by my authority as a councilman of salt marsh surely these charges brought forth by the patriar amrick van thampur of baldur's gate are <laughs> mistaken talis and anaris have proved themselves upright citizens and as so far as i can keep my eye on them i will vouch for their lawfulness Please destroy the writ in your possession for their arrest and removal back to Baldur's Gate. Oops. (laughs) Is there any indication as to who this is for? Who this is like was written, who his intended um, recipient would have been? Isn't that guy? It is intended for. Um, it seems as if, um, there is a facsimile being drafted here. So this one, this particular one is being drafted to representatives of the Lord's Alliance in Waterdeep. You're right. Can he send another one? (laughs) Um. Well, <laughs> guess we make our way back to the uh, the ship. Bunk down for the night. You're about back there already, and that's when okay. um, Nether okay, looks through this okay. document. So, right. yep, letter of exoneration of the crimes of Talise and Anaris, which had been committed in Baldur's Gate. Alleged crimes. Alleged. Okay. The description is also there in the letter, which alleges <laughs> that they were yeah. hired by one Amrik Van Thampur for delicate contract work and absconded with their advance pay, not to be found yeah. for some time. Yeah. No. We who like knows? The... That's, who knows? Um, Could anybody know? I mean... I... I guess they could, do you are you trying to wrap these things up a little early, um, Peter? Because I totally no, go with not it. particularly. If you guys would like to keep going, I just think that starting the next phase yeah, of things would definitely be get better that. left for the next night. By the way, he's not the Messiah. He's a very he's a naughty, very boy. naughty <laughs> boy. Thank you, Pixie. That Pixie. <laughs> It makes me happy. I Love think that, that life so of Brian is un- criminally underrated compared to the Holy the, Grail. The oh, aqueduct. It's so it's so what? true. It's the aqueduct. so good. <laughs> is, oh my god. Now I'm going to have to watch that this weekend. I'm not the eyes. Messiah. Only the so true good. Messiah would deny his own divinity. 
Okay, I am the Messiah. He is the He's Messiah. The Messiah. <laughs> 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 <It's> just ab- <laughs> Oh my god. I just I just love that we have someone called the Bat Pope in chat while oh, we're quoting yes. Life of Brian. Oh, that's great. Just, it oh. is excellent. <laughs> so uh, back to the stuff. ship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To the ship. So got we get we get variety here. We don't just quote Holy Grail on this D D podcast or D D show. We we quote all of the Monty Python stuff. So, anyway, Pixie well, had a good we... idea. Movie night on Discord to watch it. That would be <gasps> oh, that'd be fun. Oh my god, be ready that'd with your mo- meaning of life and flying circus, guys. Next session coming at you. Anyway, <gasps> all right. So we return back to the ship, <laughs> and that letter having been read by Nether, and. Was that read out loud, or was that, or was that just Leather reading to herself? That was Nether has not Debris. shared it. Debris. Nether has not shared it. Yeah. Think real hard about what name you call her next, Elise. I know. I, <laughs> I did really well at first, and the last few times I've slipped, and I. She doesn't it doesn't like help that I mean I I do always refer to her as Nether, and that's on purpose. So. Point is. So Sorry. you return. Oh, it is now late at night. It is the. It has become that time of evening again, and um, mm-hmm. the the port of Salt Marsh is quiet. Um, is there any like visible smoke or fire damage, or like any marks left over from the prime water uh, there, accidental fire? It is a full moon and. So there is a bit of silvery light, as well as the ambient lamp light cascading up from the streets. And you can see smoke rising from that window, that kind of corner of the house. It's hard to see it now because of the smoke. Smoke, steam, or a combination of the two sort of obscures that area and rises like a column into the still night. Nay, nay. Nay, nay. Nay, nay. Nay, nay. Nay, nay. Yeah, what? 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 That was really fun. We haven't done that for a while. I know. I I really didn't mean to set the place on fire. It was just sort of a panic moment, but you know, I mean, we do need to do this. Well, that's what we always would do. I thought everything went off really well. I was going to say, we should do this more often. Is there anything else we can steal while we're here? I mean, there's, there's always something to steal. That's just what. That's the best thing about stealing. You can always steal. Fair point. You never have to. <laughs> <sighs> hmm. I mean, who else would we steal from? I don't. I don't really. We could always go mess with Wave Chaser. He seems interesting. Uh, uh, he's got a stick up his butt. But it'd be fun to twist it. Yeah, just to get also, a reaction. He also seems like the kind of guy <laughs> He also seems like the kind of guy who would like notice. Like I I feel like not a whole hell of a lot gets past him. <laughs> you know? It's really hard to get past that visual right now. <laughs> You're the one that's instead of stick up his butt. Why are you on a stick? <laughs> The newest state fair <laughs> product. <laughs> yeah, oh that's going in a poem. <laughs> if, if there's a, if there's a nasty quiet with a stick up your butt. If there's a, if there's a quiet moment <laughs> on the deck, uh, Nether will be out there. Okay. What's the very back of the ship called again? The poop deck. Poop no. deck. Well, this, I mean the, the stern, stern. Yeah, but like is... the top part. Quarter deck? Like quarter deck? Yeah, that one. Yeah. I'm gonna hang out there. Where? Astronaut poop deck is you know that. <laughs> you know that. You were just trolling. <laughs> is the main is the main sort of deck, the lowest one, the the main working deck. Anyway. Or the um, so yeah, that's there. Also, there there are quite a few it's 
the height of summer at this point, um, it's a bit warm. It's it's nice near the water, but there's a number of flies and stuff. And now that the moon is out, it is clear. There are a number of bats kind of flying around eating these flies. And so it's not quite as calm a night as you would like, whether or not you're swatting mosquitoes or horse flies or a bat whoosh, kind of swoops down next to your head or you hear. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a living night. A fish jumping out of the water, catching a bug having landed on the ground. Um, it is a living night this night, not a quiet one, both mm. at the sea and at the town. Well, I do try and get the attention of some of the bats and tell them how nice it would be if they kept this particular area clear of Okay. Mosquitoes. And you get a little oof, couple of them just buzzing around you, which you're not quite sure if that's more calming. Um, them concentrating on the bugs next to you. Maybe this was a bad idea. No, no, I'm going to, I'm sticking with it. I'm going to stand out here and watch the ocean. Did okay. you make some friends? <laughs> well, I think they're keeping the bugs away. But they're kind of like big bugs. Mm. It, it was... It didn't really go that smoothly, this uh, heist. heist. Yeah. I mean, I think if it had gone entirely smoothly, we wouldn't have seen the building catch fire. There's that. That thing only happens when everything goes under control. It, I mean, a fire in Salt Marsh. I'm not really sure where we are with the various people who are in charge here. Allies, enemies. But the homes and the houses. I feel like that's more a part of the city than any of the people. But then uh, homes and houses are just things. So maybe that's not the city. I I'm, I'm not yeah. sure. Is it the people or is it the houses or is it the location? What is it about this place that, I mean, it makes sense on a certain scale, but there's something more to it. Something draws me here. It doesn't make well, any sense. Speaking as someone who hasn't lived in a house proper since I was, ah, uh, yay high. Um, and, you know, it, it feels more like your home's where you decide to put your hat up or whatever piece of clothing floats your boat as far as the metaphor is concerned. So but, why, why have you put your hat up in so many places? I mean, I'm not saying it's wrong. Just why? Why have you not selected a home? Because when I was young, I didn't have one in the same way that so many people do. I traveled for years from when I was an infant. And then all of a sudden, when, when my mother was like, okay, great, we're going to stop now and put roots down, like that didn't feel right. It's stifling. But I think I wish I was more like you. Yeah. I have such a strong, strong attachment here. It feels... It feels... Like a trap sometimes. It, honestly, they both seem like extremes. 
neither is without its detraction. I I think you know, at least to some degree, that I feel badly about having left you behind so many times. But well, I'll admit it used to really make me upset. And it, it still does. But the more time I spent with nature, the more time I came to the conclusion that things will behave how they behave because it's in their nature. Oh, cheers to that. But more to the point. Maybe the question of what it is that makes salt marsh important to you is less important than the fact that it is important to you. It's hard to unpack the why of how we feel and what we do sometimes. We're all mercurial creatures. So if it's important to you, then don't question it and just decide what you want to do about it, which it does seem like you're kind of on the verge of something. Hmm. Well, that might be a discussion for another day. What do you think of Sarian? Hard left. Um, hard pass. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Firm no from um, me. Her heart's in the right place. I'll give her that. But she seems like a young bird that's been sent out to fly for the first time. And maybe hasn't caught the right wind just yet or at least maybe found the wind and just isn't sure how to fly it yet she's a paladin right holy so. warrior she's only the second one i've ever seen yeah run into them here and there do you think i should ask her questions or Tell her about. I, uh, maybe. I mean, it, I don't think it's the same God. Yeah. But I mean, it seems like with, with all of these sort of, you know, religious types, they come in varied shades depending on what they believe and who they believe in or place their faith in. So... Yeah. Well, I'll think about it. Be nice to know something more mm. about how they think. I don't think there's anything wrong with picking a brain. Just, you know. No, yeah, that's, that's it. That's, she seems like she'd be open to a conversation. Put it that way. Oh, by the way, this is doll. We've met. And you see a sort of Cheshire cat sort of look. Oh, God. From, it's a little tiny <laughs> creature about this tall on Nether's shoulder. And from the top up, he's very um, cute, for want of a better word. Um, sort of a little upturned button nose, almond eyes, um, big blue uh, um, eyebrows and a blue mohawk going back and long tapered ears that actually go up much higher and taper to a much longer point, almost like antennae um, than a, um, a uh, elf. And he has a little, a uh, little bobble, sort of a little tentacle sticking from his forehead that comes out and has a little uh, light on the front. So very, very small. And then from the nose down, he just has this gigantic maw of teeth that are all kind of like, sticking out all over sort of like a um a cuttlefish mm -hmm. not a cuttle, mm -hmm. an anglerfish just all different jutting in different directions and just sort of 
looks at you with the uh, gr- the mouth which is closed goes Hang. pleasure to make your visual acquaintance when I couldn't stay at the bridge I I tried to make whatever was there that made it home come with me and this is what came interesting it is also how I see now makes sense uh doll yes um my actual name is very difficult for you to pronounce, so doll is fine. Ah, okay. Um, yeah, thank you for everything that you do to look after Debris. Please don't make insinuations about my affection or the state of my friendship with her. All right? Eh, got the job done, didn't it? Don't need to be an ass. Sometimes there is. Okay, well, we're going to put the kibosh on that on this point, okay? Kibosh. Oh my god, I use too many colloquialisms. Anyway, um, so. You're old enough to drink. Do you do you want any alcohol? I just hold out my half-empty bottle <laughs> to Debbie. Not that that's really stopped you before, but, you know, I feel a little less bad about it. Sure, but let's go downstairs. This is not working out. Yeah, okay. Go away. (laughs) (laughs) Through my cabin. The um, bats continue to dart around above the sails, above the mast, and eat all the bugs, the many bugs that rise out of this summer... um, marsh near salt marsh and prion you bunk near the um crew right i imagine you wouldn't have taken your own room you just kind of sling a cot between yeah yeah you're kind of taking your spot and another sailor as normal slings one above you and uh you kind of see a shadowed face look over and say Good progress today. We sailing again soon? I believe so. I gonna look for more more treasure. Treasure excitement. Well, more adventure. I like treasure, I like excitement. Pay is good. Are we, I mean, I'm not going to come out of this changed, am I? In what sense? We're doing the right thing. You're not privateering versus, you know, Om or anything like that, are you? No. It's all upstanding? Of course. Well, if it isn't. Then I'll be complaining. It's just a weird... Salt Marsh has gotten weird. You know? I'm pretty new here. And I have to agree, it's very weird. I used to be... Just fisher folk, you know? Just working hard and... Making their wages... Feeding their families. Now half the things we catch are salted and sent off to some city to feed a famine. Ugh. Fishers will throw back a tasty catch just to keep a few other fish that'll keep better. I mean, I don't know. Did you hear about the uh, the murder in town? 
Which one was that? I don't know. Some guy got stabbed and crushed or something outside of the Soulmore Manor. Oh, I wouldn't I... know anything about that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I heard about that. What do you think about it? Well, it's never good to have anyone roaming the streets that's going to do that. I'm sure mm. the authorities would have the right thing to do. You've been given some authority, right? In a way. If you knew someone was bad, would you... confront them would you do something about it if they were a murderer i what if they plan to do something worse what do you know i know that well this is just the talk of fisher folk right Sure. We hear the sea. We listen to the wind. Never, never discount some old fisherman and his tales. They all come from something. The leadership of Salt Marsh is more fragile than you think, I think. I think I tend to agree. Yeah. And then if one... Th if one thing falls short, if one part fails and breaks, ah, what's to stop the city from descending into chaos? And what happens then to all the people? What happens to the fishermen feeding their family? Sure, sending a few salts, a few more salted fish off to Luskin than they'd like, but still. Honest living. What happens to them? I have no idea. What can little folk do? If there's corruption, it takes a lot of people to stand up to it. Does it? Well, it's always going to be better in numbers, no? One man Maybe. or one woman can't do it. Have you ever, have you ever served on a man of war? No, this is the first big ship I've been on. Sometimes I, I served once. I, uh, my best friend took a bit of decking straight into his foot. You know some bastard luskin mage launched some sort of fire at the ship and exploded and launched that bit into him and the we had a surgeon and he took the whole foot off you know he just but he said that that sort of targeted exact action was what was needed to save the whole body i'm just wondering if you knew something was wrong in salt marsh and you could identify what needed to be surgically removed would you do it if someone knew or would you make a big deal out of it and suddenly it gets political and you know becomes about who makes more money off of where all the dominoes fall. Have we met before? I'm just a sailor. Hi. What's your name again? I 
I was midshipman, you know. And they did call me Caleb. I I thought as much. So do you want the next clue? Aye, I do. Or should I choose at random? No, tell me. You'll see. And you can see the bunk above you just relax as if all of the physical weight in the hammock has just released, turned into some effervescent um, incorporeal mist that whew, gently floats out the porthole and joins the fog. Setting, you... dancing gracefully on the harbor. As it mist goes away, I'm like... Just killing the person's not exactly showing me. As I probably would just watch it leave. And do you get no response? And that point is where we will leave off as you all drift off to sleep for the evening. 